for those of you that are on the fence about it um, or are totally into it, you know who Eric Dubé is. Eric Dubé is like the godfather of, of uh, the modern day flat earth movement. Cause you know, some people think the flat earth is like something it's brand new. And the last time it was, it was uh, believed in was just by really dumb religious people back in the caveman days. That's what people believe. That's what I believe. Like flat earth. I mean, that just dumb r religious people from 2000 years believe that uh, it's in the Bible. Yeah. In the Bible, that, that's not true. You know, it's anything in the Bible. It's like Jack and Jill stories. So that's what most people think. But what, what the reality is, um, there's always been scientific debates about the shape of the earth, whether it's round, whether it's stationary, whether it's a flat plane, whether it's moving, you know, at 60,000 miles uh, per hour around the sun and the sun is moving 600,000 miles around the center of the galaxy, all that shit. Um, whatever you believe, uh, it's faith based when it comes to space, because um, whether the earth is really round and and um, the stars are really what they claim to be and the stars are really as far apart as they claim to have figured out uh, all that you just got to take someone's word for it i mean that's all faith based cuz you can't figure that shit out on your own so it's it's just as faith based as believing in the bible you know believing that someone actually had a vision that god came down and gave him um, instructions to do something and then these stories were written and then people follow this like a cult that's all faith based you got to believe that this guy really had god come to him i mean that's faith and that's cool if you want to believe that that's cool people believe it it's better than you know uh be an atheist i guess i don't know but um it's faith based and when you're talking about anything in space unless you figured it out you got to take someone's word for it so that's faith based and and again, Eric Dubé, he's um, doing, he's not doing anything new. He's basically quoting um, uh, peop, authors that have written books about the flat earth for, uh, forever. There's, there's been a giant scientific debate at the top, at the top about whether the earth spins, whether it's a plane, whether it's round, how far the sun away is, is away from us. What is the moon? What is the sun? What are the stars? There's all these theories and debates. And, um, and Eric, and, and I wanted to do another podcast on flat earth. And I asked Eric, like who, who impresses him the most, who is the most legit of the flat earth host out there. There's a bunch on, on, uh, YouTube. I like, you know, I like, um, I like going to odd reality and watching their 24 seven live stream of flat earth stuff. I do that almost every day. I get on odd reality and watch a 24 seven. It's very entertaining. You you're constantly, it's like a mixtape. It's a mixtape of flat earth. Very entertaining. Um, it's, it's good to hear uh, certain um, videos over and over again. So you don't remember There's just so much information. You got to listen to it over and over. Yeah. Otherwise you forget. And it's very entertaining. I'm very entertained um, on how uh, you control the masses. I like that. I'm like, wow, these it, the masses are easily controlled. Oh, so easily. All you got to do is control the media and the science and history and boom, that's, that's a, it's a no brainer. So easy, so easy. So I'm fascinated with how we're fooled and, and how people are lied to. And, and I'm fast and it, it infuriates me too. When, when you start thinking about all the fucking crazy sick shit, like all the pedophilia that's going on at, at the top with the elite and the kidnappings and no one looks into any kidnapping. People just get kidnapped and no one even, no one even looks into it. You I know? never looked into that till after I started looking at flat earth. Yeah. That yeah. led me to that stuff. Well. Yeah. So that at the, t at the top, What's holding everything together, what's holding the corruption together at the top is, is blackmail, is pedophilia blackmail. That, that's what's holding every, everything together. Hmm. And uh, it's, it's scary. That's scary shit. So you got to watch your kids. I would, Weed is holding me yeah, together. You got to put GPS on your kids, guys. You get some kind of GPS little uh, toe ring on your kids because there's people out there kidnapping them and putting them into child sex trafficking rings. Look at, look at that documentary, Who Took Johnny? watch that shit and then watch conspiracy of silence watch that shit holy fuck um anyways so eric dubé he he couple times he's brought up dell from um the youtube channel beyond the imaginary curve he's brought him up and i remember 
going through YouTube once and, and looking at one of his videos and he's got a heavy Scottish accent. So and it, it's, it's very, my English isn't that good, you know, and uh, I'm not very smart. So it's very, sometimes it's hard to follow him when, you know, the, the audio is not that good. But um, uh, Eric Dubé kept um, recommending him. He goes, this is the real deal. This guy's the best out there. And then I go, okay. So I started looking at his videos and man, I'm hooked on beyond the imaginary curve as well. Adele comes at you with the no nonsense approach. No, uh, no graphics, you know, uh, uh, lo low, low budget production. Um, he just tells, he just puts flat earth together so beautifully. And, and his specialty is just going out on the streets and just talking to random people about what they, about flat earth and, and um, what they think we live on. And man, his interviews are so entertaining because he's just taking people off the street just like you and me. He goes to univers universities and interviews uh, professors and um, students that have no idea. They just think he's a guy with a camera. And when you have a camera on somebody, you know, they, they become, they know it's being videotaped. So they, their ego doesn't come out as much. Mm -hmm. So it's actually easier to talk to them because, you know, you got them on film yeah, and right, they don't right. want to seem dumb. Mm -hmm. And the way Dell puts it all together, these, these interviews, he's just, he's a master. He's um, uh, generally people at the end of his interviews, they, they're they're going to become flat earthers. They're, you could just tell they're they're right there. They were on the fence, maybe, may, and uh, and and the way Dell interviews them is just it's uh it's addicting. I love watching it. I was awesome. watching it last night. I'm like, dude, no wonder Eric Dubé kept recommending him. And uh, so I'm going to introduce him now. And his partner is uh um from the UK. His name is Gav. Um, and they work to Dell. Are you there? Can you hear me, Dell? Yeah, yeah. You ready? How you doing, Dell? Yeah, I'm good, Matt. Thanks. How are, are you? Are you in Glasgow? Yeah, I'm in Paisley, which is just you know five minutes outside Glasgow. Yeah. I got a tenth planet, Glasgow. You should go in there, learn some jujitsu. You might have to if the, if the CIA comes after you. <laughs> you better learn that jujitsu. <laughs> Seriously, hey, Dell, if, if you want to do jujitsu, and you, are you close to Glasgow? Did you say you? Yeah. You, Man, yeah, I'm just you, along the road. Yeah. that would be awesome, man. I'll hook it up. I'll hook you all up. I'll show you some up. deep half. Go no. <laughs> oh, I'm up. Um, are you uh, are you are you a UFC fan at all, Dell? Yeah, I'm, I watch it. Yeah. So, what do you think of the Conor McGregor Mayweather fight? Are you interested in that at all, or not really? Yeah, I'm interested in it, but um, I think it's a bit of a mismatch, to be honest with you. But who, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> And, 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 and can you introduce Gavin? You tell me a little bit about Gavin. Is he your partner in Imaginary Curve or what's going on? Yeah, Gav, Gav um, came to the platform um, offering his expertise. Um, I mean, Gav's there. You, you want to let people know, but yeah. Hey, Gav. Here, Gav. Can you hear us, Gav? Yeah, I can. Hi, Eddie. How, How you doing? doing? Um, I apologize for not knowing that much about you, Gav, um, but... Um, uh, Eric Dubé also recommended you, and then uh, Adele said, asked me if, if you could come on. I, d wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I asked you to be on first, though, right, Gav? Is that is that what? My head's exploding. I, yeah, I barely I remember what's going on. Yeah, I don't think it matters much. Yeah, we're both here now, so. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, ex uh, let's get back to Dell first. I want you to to tell us about how you got turned on to flat earth and what made you start questioning what was your what was the process with you um i think the initial process before i got into flat earth was um i was kind of involved with the whole creationism evolution debates and also you know in regards to what consciousness is so like the mind body problem um and through you know kind of studying and learning um these two subjects I started to realize that science was pretty much based in a kind of philosophical religious stance if you like which is something known as philosophical materialism um, and, and I started to recognize patterns through that that were pretty much faith-based I started to realize things that I had taken for granted that, that I'd taken on faith and assumed to be true until I started you know really delving into it and you know from that it just kind of led and I'm not sure I think I seen a video um, and that, that kind of led on to Eric's 200 proofs um, and from from there I just kind of you know carried on the process 
So it was, it was the, the evolution creationism coupled with a mind body um, question, which which led me to some realizations, and then into this subject. You know? And then you you mentioned Eric Dubay's uh, video, two hundred proofs that the world is flat. Right, that one, or the world. Two hundred proofs the Earth's not a globe. Oh, okay, okay. Um, that's a that's a great one to start with. I think the best flat Earth introductory video. In my opinion, I always send people the history of Flat Earth from Eric Dubé. That one, I think that one it, it gets right into what people really thought about the, the world and, and the Flat Earth maps and all that, you know, hundreds of years ago. When if you don't really get a lesson, a quick lesson in that, I think that people like myself, I just thought the only people that thought the world was flat were just dumb religious people who, who like, you know, didn't know anything. I never realized that in the scientific community it was always a big debate. It was going back and forth. Never really, once you realize that, and that, you know, there's, it's, it, that flat earth is not a new thing. And it's always been around. It kind of just took a hiatus for a little while. Um, once you realize that, then, you know, especially if you're already a conspiracy theorist, because if you're already like a, a 9-11 guy or, or a, you know, um, uh, just your average conspiracy theorist, you're used to the fact that you're being lied to all the time. But most of them, myself included, I didn't think, okay, they're not lying about that. They lie about everything, but why would they lie about the shape of the earth? There's pictures and stuff everywhere, you know? And once I realized, once I realized that NASA, because I was already, a, I already, I never believed that we went to the moon. I mean, maybe when I was a kid, but I've been a, uh, a, a moon hoax guy forever and you know there's no way you're going to convince me we went to the moon so once i realized that nasa because i knew nasa couldn't be trusted but once i realized that nasa is really the one controlling all the uh, cosmology information that's when i started going oh because when i was looking for pictures of earth from space on the internet they were coming from the nasa.gov website so Really quick, I'm th I'm thinking, oh man, NASA is controlling all this shit. I never realized it. I I thought it was just like the entire scientific community. Like everyone thinks that there's just science. These all these scientists studying the stars every day, and they're they're all they're all taking turns on the telescope, and somehow through a telescope, somehow you can you can tell what they're made of. We can oh, we found a planet light years away we can't see it but we know what it's made of based on what you see in a telescope it did then really quick it all falls apart you're like okay nasa's controlling all this jesus christ what the hell are we on and then fairly quickly for me it became pretty obvious that it may be uh, it, it may be flat or maybe not but it's definitely not what they're telling us like you just you just can't believe anything coming from the mainstream media. If it's on the news, it, it, that took that valuable spot, that airtime. They're not going to just throw any news up on CNN. It's all, it all has a purpose. And the purpose is never to inform the people of what's going on. Why would they do that? If I was a psychopath, I wouldn't do that. It wouldn't even be a thought. If I'm sitting, you know, in a conference room with all the elite and all the, you know, trillionaires out there, nobody is ever going to say, but the people need to know, we need to do this for the people. That's never coming up ever. That's never coming up. You know, so if whatever they're saying, it can't be true. Like, like if they can lie, they will. Yeah. Like, like with global warming, like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a geologist or whatever those scientists are called that study the the climate. I I, I don't have access to any of that information. Mm -hmm. But if Al Gore is saying there's a uh, a problem with carbon, then there's no problem with carbon. <laughs> then it just can't be. You know, it's it's got to be something. It's just bullshit. And then you look into it and you look into the other side of global warming and the other people people that are really into it. They're saying I don't know if it's true, but they're saying oh no, they're just trying to put a tax on carbon. They're just trying to um, you know uh, 
put us in, you know, in more debt. They're just trying to make more money off a fake carbon tax, free money, free trillions. That's what they're saying. And and uh, who am I going to believe, Al Gore or the people saying it's a tax scam? I mean, come on, it's a no-brainer, right? Dell. Uh, so, um, uh, or or Gav. Now, Gav, you're. Um, uh, um, Eric Dubé was telling me we went back and forth on a couple emails, right? Yeah, we did. Okay. And you were talking about, um, uh, what's your specialty when it comes in to flat earth? Like where, where's your expertise? I know you're, you're, you got a degree in mathematics. Can you, can you explain your, how you got into flat earth? Yeah, well, I, I reckon I've been, you know, ever since about the age of 20, 21, looking into conspiracy theories, if that's what you want to call them, or looking into the lies we've been told. Um, but uh, it was only about four years ago that um, the flat earth uh, information reached me. Um, I've got a combined honours degree in maths and physics. So, you know, I believed uh, that all that they told me in science was, was correct. Um, until that time, um, and ever since I've looked into it now, um, I, I know that we've been told a lie. The, it's not a globe, uh, and natural science and common sense are the two things that tell me that. So, yeah, that's my expertise, if you like, natural science, common sense, direct realism. Those are maybe the, the topics we want to discuss today. What do you say to people that say, what, one of the most common things people say when you're discussing flat earth is, but how could all the scientists be wrong? How could they all be in on this? All the scientists. What do you say to those guys? Well, <clears throat> uh, mathematics is a formal science. You've, you'll have heard that before. Um, and a formal science is just like a language. So there's a, a distinction between a formal science like mathematics and a natural science. Um, formal science is all about definitions. Um, it's all about the meanings of words. So a mathematician can believe whatever definitions and axioms and if he then, you know, following from those definitions and axioms comes to conclusions, then he will believe them if he believes his definitions. Um, so there's no conspiracy that lots of scientists are all in on this game. What they don't realize is that the definitions and assumptions and axioms in which they're basing their reasoning are fallacious. They're the things that are wrong and they're the things that people need to start looking at, including academics. And maybe just to give you, you know, my reason for, for joining with Dell, um, after looking at the flat earth for, for about three years, um, I came across Dell as well and his, um, um, his, uh, his hangouts. And I decided that, you know, for me, it was very important that I showed that it's not just, you know, common people that are asking this question, but there's also academics asking this question. And I wanted to bring my expertise to the table, too, and try and find out what the hell's going on. It's beautiful. And Dell, same question. Like, what do you tell people? You, you, your interviews are awesome. You, you just crack people right open. Um, what do you say when, when they say, well, what about all the scientists? I mean, the, the scientists have been wrong. They've known this for 500 years. They've proven all they this. They can't all be on it together. Well, yeah. it's, a, it's a bit of a fallacy, just as Gab said. You know, if, just like me, you would have to postulate then that for the 37 years of my life, you know, up until that point of realisation that I was actively lying. When it's not, you, you just believe these things. Um, it's a fallacy within yourself that you just base it on assumption from authority and you take these things for granted to be true until you actually start sifting through and looking at it. So, uh, you know, these, these fallacies that, that people bring at you, everybody would have to be in on it. It's, it's, it's just a nonsense because, you know, quite clearly, as, as Gav just stated, and, and myself, obviously, everybody doesn't have to be in on it. You know, if people are believing what they've been told and that they're following through with that, then, you know, it's just a matter of getting them to look at it, you know? Yep, if you never question the things that you base all your beliefs on, then, you know, um, there's no way you're going to find it out, right? You actually have to start digging in within yourself and thinking, well, what is it I'm believing and why do I believe it, yeah? Mm -hmm. And yeah, when you do right. that, then that's when the whole thing falls apart. And, and, and you have, you have basically, to... scientists aren't doing that. Sorry, Bill. Yeah. And people have to strip it back. You know, we always push direct realism, natural science, actual substance. Yeah. You have to bring things back to what we can actually test, observe and see for ourselves. You know, and it is the roots of science. It's based in substance. So, you know, things like the, the natural physics of water, fluid mechanics, how, how 
you know, that substance behaves on Earth, that tells us beyond any shadow of a doubt that we do not live on the exterior of any shape. So you're not going to get any practical person, scientist, physicist that's going to come forward denying these things. You know, you, you will get sophists who will try and, you know, give explanations and arguments. And it's pretty much based on images. But, you know, for me, we, we can't ignore natural physics in favour of an image. You, you don't start trying to work physics into fit an image. So for me, you know, the NASA images and videos don't even come into the equation as far as I'm concerned, you know? One of uh, um, <clears throat> one thing I took from you, Dell, recently is uh, I love how you, you, when you're having a debate with someone who's not a flat earther, you, 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 get, you engage in a conversation where you're only talking about things that you both agree on and that you both can prove. And uh, yeah. you, you, you're always asking the, the guy you're, you're debating with if he agrees with something. Like when you're talking about nat the laws uh, of natural science, it must be observable, measurable, testable, and repeatable. Is that correct? Yeah. Is there four? Right. Those four, right? Yeah. And like, how could you not agree with that? When you, when you talk to someone, you're having a debate, how could they not agree with that? It has to be observable, measurable, testable, and repeatable. That's science, exactly. right? Well, and, well we're, t we're talking about objective reality, so it has to come into that, that criteria, you know? Yeah, and we um, even Neil deGrasse Tyson, he even says that he doesn't know what gravity is, and it, it always comes back to gravity. Gravity is that, if they didn't have gravity, man, they would have nothing to hold on to, but you can't measure it, you can't test it, and you you can't observe it, right? Yeah. So so you, gravity becomes the theory. So if you can't, is is, is this? I mean, I'm I'm no scientist. I'm just. I mean, is this right? You guys would know, right? Isn't that makes sense to me? Like, if you, it's not science if you can't measure it, correct? Yeah. Or you can't test yep. it, and you can't. Re is this it's right? Not natural science. It's not natural science, and you you were making the distinction. Uh, of formal science. I didn't know. Formal science would be mathematics, right? Yeah. Anything with a language, yeah. Yeah. The base, uh, bases uh, based on definitions and axioms and assumptions, yeah. You know what's insane is how um, they always use this, the, the, the Globers, as uh, how they proved the earth was round like back like a thousand years ago. There was a shadow in like the Middle East and then that king had a friend in another country and they measured the shadow at the same time. Uh, and then they figured out that the world was 25,000 miles in circumference. They, that's actually in science uh, programs, right? Isn't that crazy? Yep. They're talking about yep. a shadow down in a well. It's like some, it sounds like a biblical story, right? <laughs> and they hold Pretty on to that. Is. And they hold on to that. That's like the proof. Like they proved it a thousand years ago. They, they, there was a guy who was looking. He he did a test. He had a stick, and then he looked down a well, and then he waited for the sun to be twelve o'clock, and then somehow he, uh, I don't know how he, maybe he called them or sent like a raven. <laughs> you know, to. Kitchen. Is that, said yeah, they pigeon, said, it, no, is that what they did? Else. Is that what they, is that part of the story? They had a pigeon in the story? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See, that is the funniest shit ever. People hold on to that. And then that Bill the Nye guy, whatever that science guy, the Bill Nye, he, he there's a video that's, that it's, I don't know if you guys watch those mixtapes, those flat earth mixtapes. I love that shit. They burn him. I love that. I, that's so entertaining to me. But he's talking about, he's on his show, how it, watching he's explaining how ships go over the horizon and you know the hull goes first and then the mass and he goes that's science and but anybody not the science guy you can go to youtube and and disprove that right away they go oh look it's going over the horizon like no it isn't you know if it was going over the horizon you wouldn't be able to zoom in on it how do you zoom in on something that went over the fucking horizon i have to explain that to people people will say i'll send them a video and they go, no, all I, I don't know what this video is you're showing me. All I saw is a boat that you couldn't see, and then you zoomed in on it, and you could see it. Like, they don't, they don't explain. He goes, they don't, a, a famous celebrity, I was having an a argument with him. He goes, Eddie, I was in the Mediterranean on this yacht, and I saw with my own eyes a boat go over the horizon. You could just see him going, and there's a, a line of them. There was like a line of all these ships. I seen it with just my own eyes. Lying through their teeth. Yeah. Like, why are you lying to me? No, no, he didn't. No, he believed it. He believed it, and to him it made sense. But then when I showed him the video of um, them zooming in on a boat that appeared to go over the horizon, mm -hmm. he didn't understand 
that it's impossible to zoom in on something that goes over a curve. He didn't. He, he couldn't see that. He just thought you just zoomed in on it, bro. You're just showing me something. I'm like, ugh, it's incredible, right? <laughs> but there's there's other explanations for that, right? Um, you know, if if some if some phenomenon like that has two different explanations, then the one that they're they're saying can't be right because there are other ones. For example, using perspective that show you very clearly that your visual acuity or the diffraction limit, as they call it, of light um, will will give you the same phenomena that things disappear bottom first. So, you know, it's a, it's a completely false argument, again, based on, you know, visible phenomena and not on anything tangible that can be measured, no physical substance. It's a yeah. visible phenomenon. And just because people don't understand how it works doesn't make it real. Yeah. It's part, it's part of the sophism, if, if you don't know if not many people know what sophism means, but you will even see it in their explanations. They, they say that in order to recreate this effect, you can you only can do it viewing objects going away straight in front of you. You know, So you know right there and then that they're playing on an optical effect. That's part of the sophism because you know it's simple geometry. If, if somebody is going to say to me that at 12 or 20 miles, a ship is going over the horizon of the globe Earth, so we'll get rotund, curvy, convex, nature-defying water, but the ship is going <laughs> over at 12 to 20 miles. So if you take an equilateral triangle and you say that you are the observer A viewing the ship, which is, you know, B, at, at point C, you should have somebody who can measure the, the, the curvature from left to right. Now, nobody ever sees anything from left to right so you know you see that they're using sophism that they're, they're playing on a lack of understanding on perspective and how our eyes work when they when they pull that nonsense about the ships going over the curve of the earth you know? yeah the curve yeah. the curve thing <laughs> is to me uh like i i just focus on uh the fact that nasa's controlling uh the International Space Station and all the and and the obvious tax scam that that is because correct me if I'm wrong guys but isn't isn't the, the International Space Station hasn't it that been floating in the thermosphere for like 15 years right is that correct yeah. and so is, I think that's what they say yeah. it, the officially no officially that what I they don't say remember a launch. Is, I don't is, remember it being is uh, in the news yeah the, the International yeah. Space Station to their, they're saying it's in the thermosphere, right? And don't they say that the thermosphere is like between 800 degrees and like 1700 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Yep. So, yep. so there's something's been floating in space for 15 years in the thermosphere, and it's the size of like a 747 jet. And anytime, anytime they show you footage of inside the International Space Station, they're like in polo shirts and like dockers and it's incredible i mean it seems like we've gone the only the only time in history where we've gone backwards in technology is is space we go to the moon in 69 do it six times and then they trash that they destroy the technology that astronaut don pettit man if i was in the illuminati i would fucking i would that guy would have been suicided and I would have, I would have deleted. If I was in the Illuminati, I would have, I would have made him look like he never worked for NASA. Had got Mick West on the case and just say, this guy, there's no proof he even worked at NASA, because the shit they're allowing him to say, like Don Pettit, he's a NASA astronaut. He's everyone in the flat Earth community. We we get this. All, we see this one all the time where he goes, I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond, except we we we, we destroyed all the technology. You. We destroyed, and uh, it's been a pain to try to put it back together. My, that guy would have been suicided if I was one of them psychopaths. Jesus Christ. How do, how do they let guys say that? I mean, and then no one gives a shit. They destroy, he said, I would go to the moon in a nanosecond, except we destroyed all the technology, everything, all the data, all the records. Right there, if that doesn't, if that doesn't make you suspicious, about the moon landings because everybody whether you believe they happened or not you know that there's a reason to doubt it like there's a reason there's a reason there's a lot of fishy shit you could believe that we went to the moon but don't get all weird that there's people that don't believe it because look at all this shit and then when you hear that they destroy the technology and all the records if you're still 
on their side. You got an excuse for that. If you somehow rationalize that, you're a hundred percent hypnotized or you're, you're being paid by them and you're part of it. Do you guys have fluoride in your water? Like we do here in America. Like, like we have fluoridated, fluoridated water and it dumbs everybody down and nobody wants to ask questions and preoccupies everybody with their TV yep. shows and sports stars is one of the, is one of the reasons I hear for why nobody does anything about this. And I'm curious because I knew when I was a little kid, don't drink the water out of the tap. You drink the bottled water. You know what I'm saying? It was like something's in that water. It's dirty. Or whatever there's metals i never knew what the story was if i was in the illuminati i would put out the rumor that we're putting fluoride that they're in the water but not really go through with it just tell people that there's fluoride in the water and then uh own all the bottled water companies and then put fluoride in that Boom. and just trick everybody you really want to put fluoride in the water tell them that it's in the tap and it's not in the tap and own like you think doesn't nestle own most of those water companies and isn't nestle like yeah. in the bilderberg group is, yeah. isn't then they make i would do that and i would call i would have all these different uh, uh bottled water companies. i would get them both ways the i would put like and florida i put spring water. spring water on it spring 100 percent spring i put all that shit and put like a little logo of a mountain with the uh, snow caps you know what i mean and call it uh Icelandic water or some shit, you know, they're probably I think there is one I think I just isn't that e isn't it easy to fool people? I mean, come on. It's too easy it's, Wizard of Oz. it's too easy. People don't give a shit. They don't they don't give a shit. No one gives a shit No one gives a fucking shit about anything and because if if you had kids you guys have kids Yeah, I have a yeah. kid and if I if there was a rumor if there was a rumor that at the the, the school that your kids attend that there was like a child molester there, you wouldn't say, I need proof. I need, you would go, you would investigate that shit. You'd want the proof. You'd look for the proof. But if you didn't initially find the proof, you're going to investigate whether it's real or not. You're going to look into it, whether it was a fake rumor. If you found out on your block, the block where you're all, you, your kids play on the block, if you found out that there was a, a guy that's kidnapping children and raping them on, on in your neighborhood, you're going to look into it, whether it's true or not, you're going to look into it. Right. But there's all this, ev there's evidence of this giant pedophile ring going on globally in everyone's government and no one gives a fuck. No one gives a shit. Nobody, no one gives a fuck. A million kids a year get kidnapped in the United States alone. And in Washington, DC, that's where they, most of them get kidnapped. Nah, I, mean, I, that's give a, a I give a fuck. That's a I just don't want to die. I it's don't want to like look into it too yeah. much and do something about oh. it and then get killed. Exactly. I, I give a fuck. Exactly. You know, but I also give a fuck about myself. Yeah. Hey, you, you yeah. said that there's a million kids that go missing. Eight hundred thousand. Unless that's a statistic that could be wrong. Okay. But even if it's tw if it's two thousand kids get kidnapped a year, if it's two thousand and not a million, right? That's incredible. Well, do, you do can't you even. You can't even bring up or question you can't even question sandy hook because 20 kids got killed Did you can't even question it yet a million kids get kidnapped and a lot of them are get if there's evidence there's a lot of evidence look at all those wikileaks emails look at the conspiracy of silence documentary look at the documentary who took johnny look at that shit Look at that shit. There's a gigantic pedof pedophile ring going on. Well, I I'm curious. Do you know like what the ratio of how many of those kidnappings are solved? They don't, dude, when you look at watch the documentary who, who Took Johnny, no one even looks into it, man. They stay away from that shit because they know where they're going. They stay away from it because they know where it leads. They know where it leads. So anyways, um, no one gives so a fuck. Trust a, a statistic you didn't falsify yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even if, like I said, even if it's 500 kids a year get kidnapped and tortured and get put into child sex trafficking rings, if it's 500 a year, that's a fucking lot. That's a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And no one gives a shit. No one's doing nothing about it at all. Just say, hey, it's a conspiracy theory. Fuck. So you know what? When it comes to that shit, I don't give a shit either. I, I don't, you know, I'm just bringing it up because it, it, uh, it's an example of the mass hypnosis that's going on, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, beauty, the, the beauty of this, this whole subject though, is that it's in everybody's direct experience. 
unfortunately, the, the majority of these other conspiracies that's pretty much based in hearsay and we don't have any real direct experience, so it's difficult to, to get anything really truthful, you know? Yes, absolutely. But, Go ahead. No, I'm just saying the difference with this subject is that it's in everybody's experience. Everybody can experience this. Everybody can verify and falsify any of this stuff for themselves in regards to this question about the shape of the earth. Gavin, what's your, t what's your take on um, the International Space Station? 15 years floating in the thermospheres. No one's ever died. Scientists coming and going, living on it for six months at a time. And that program is making about $18 billion a year. What do you think about that? Well, I think they're making a lot of money for a lot of the CGI that they give out. But if you want, if you're trying to ask me exactly what they're doing up there, it's it's kind of um, akin to asking Scotty on the Starship Enterprise how his warp drive works. Yeah? Um, if people are lying to you, then there's actually not much point in questioning what they're telling you, huh? Um, so yeah, I don't believe a word of it. I don't think there's a space up there. I don't think they're, uh, they, they they've been up there the way they claim they have. Um, and I think they show us a lot of imagery to try and persuade us that we live on a ball. And that's the only reason that they're bringing those images to us. Yeah. yeah. Have you have you seen there's um, <clears throat> remember, um, you guys, of, of course, you guys are familiar with Admiral uh, Richard Burr, Burr, correct? And uh, he's, he's the guy. He's the Navy Admiral slash uh world adventures like uh, he's he led the expedition uh operation deep freeze and um i'm not sure about the other ones but i know there's a documentary that is on youtube where it's it lasts about an hour i just saw this like a, a week and a half ago where i mean i've seen richard bird on that uh, uh tv show talking about his expeditions to Ant Antarctica. Everybody, everyone's seen that, but you don't know if he's lying or you, you don't know, you know, it, on that show, he said that beyond the South pole, there's a land as big as the United States filled with, you know, all sorts of, um, you know, uh, minerals and resources, and resources and, and coal and all that stuff. He's talking about that on that TV show. Every flat earther has seen it. You can watch it on YouTube, a 1950 show, Admiral Byrd talking about uh, Operation Deep Freeze. And, uh, but then I've never actually seen any footage. There's an hour documentary where they videotaped everything, them preparing, leaving from whatever Navy port they were at, saying bye to their families. They videotaped everything. They left out of San Diego. And they went, yeah, and then they got to, have you seen this? And then they, then they get to Antarctica and they just, they, they filmed them building like a miniature city, a base. And what they did from there is actually took airplanes and flew and explored the Antarctic, Antarctica on airplanes. And then they would come back. They would fly and then they would come back. They would fly and, and uh, there's video and them talking about this. There's video of the land. There's no ice and go look, you know, and it's, it's a, it's a documentary that never came out and uh, it's on, it's on YouTube. So that land that he was talking about on that 1950s TV show, there's video. Who knows if that's the real land? It could be fake that maybe that was, you know, Alaska or something. I don't know. You have to watch. It could easily be a fake documentary, but it's, um, it looks pretty convincing that they they found some land beyond the South Pole. Again, as Dale says, it's uh, that's the kind of thing we'll we'll never know. You know, I mean, you know, the government's lying to you, Eddie. Huh? So, yeah. you know, are you going to trust those images, those films, those documentation as any kind of real proof? But um, it's, it, but it's know, kind we, of proof we have that... to pull the thing back to natural yeah. science yeah. Um, to actually, you know, have a direct experience, observable, measurable, repeatable. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so, I mean, we can all do that with water, right? We can lie in the bathtub. We can take a cup of tea. We can go to the swimming pool. We can go to a lake. Water is always level. Yeah. That yes. is something you can directly experience and you never, ever see curved, bendy water. Um, so, you know, these are the things you need to look at. Uh, um, and they're the only things you can actually prove to yourself. If you give away your authority to judge for yourself and believe in some kind of other authority, whether it's a documentary or your government, then you're basically giving up that chance to prove it to yourself. Huh? Um, so people need to take that responsibility back and, and demand that they can prove it for themselves. What do you, what do you think happened? <clears throat> Why do you think NASA was formed? Do you think that they, do you, do you think that they, that the elite found out 
what we were on like in the 30s when August like I'm not you know with you know in, in the 30s when August Picard went up in that balloon like a hundred thousand feet and then I'm sure it, it's it looks like they found out that what they thought what we thought we were on isn't quite the same and when they came down they decided to shut down space and not let us know what's going on do you feel like it's something like that happened like nasa was created just to make sure what they just found out no one else needs to know yeah i, 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 I could i could go with any kind of hypothesis but i would have to you know um put forward that you know we don't have to have motive in order to understand that there's been lies told you know so i always feel as if i have to let people know that first because again, this is one of the things you get, you know, why would they be lying? And, you know, what this, right now, we're not really sure about what the, why, but we, we know that, that they are lying, you know, um, and that's the most important part for me. But I can totally concur with what you're saying, Eddie. For me, if, if I trace it back, it seems to me that discoveries were made and these things were set up in order to, you know, sell us this fake reality that, we, that the majority of people believe in to this day, you know? Yeah, just, man, do you think in our lifetime there'll be uh, enough money for a legit expedition uh, past the Ant Antarctica? Do you think there'll be a couple billionaires that, you know, that uh, want to no. throw some cash or something? I mean, what, what, I'm what saving you, now. What, what is, your, what is your, if someone, Dell, if someone... Someone came to you, a billionaire, and said, "I'm going to give you one billion dollars, but you got to use all that money to uh, prove that uh, you know to prove what we live on, like whether it's flat or round. What, what would you spend that billion dollars on? How would you prove it? Well, I can prove to people that we live on a, a level plane by using a simple measuring tool like water. You know, again, it's back to physics. It proves beyond any shadow of a doubt that we do not live in the exterior of any shape. So we live in a contained system, and that's provable every single day. I don't need a billion dollars to prove that. But if I had a billion dollars, I would be putting it to use in order to have exploration to as many places as I possibly could in order to try and establish the full dimensions of Earth. Beautiful. Um, <clears throat> yep. And, um, you know, maybe just one point there. Just because physicists will um, or mathematicians will redefine level to be the tangent plane to a radial coming from the center of the earth just because they define that doesn't make it true um, in fact as Dell's quite rightly pointed out you don't need any money at all to prove to yourself that the um, that the, the, the the world's flat huh? um, and that there's a level uh, level water everywhere so, um, and, and I fully agree with Dell, you know, to find out exactly how far we can go upwards or how far we can go out to the side, that would entail exploration. Then, of course, that would probably need some kind of money. But, um, you know, I would hope that the common man demands it from his own government, yeah, um, that we have that full exploration and full disclosure. Yeah. But just, just as you say, you know, that's... Um the come with these explanations and defining what level means from the, the centre of the earth and the water is equally, you know, a distance from the centre of the earth. It's, it's just a story. Again, it has to come back to practicality. As you you'll, obviously you've, you have seen those videos, Eddie, where I'll ask people, you know, can you give me one practical example of a body of water conforming to the exterior of any shape? And obviously people can't. So they can define these things any way they see fit. At the end of the day, it comes back to practicality and all claims must be shown practically or we have to ignore their claims. Yeah. yeah and maybe just one point to add on to that too. Um, it's all right to argue from facts like level water against a hypothesis, but it's not real science to come with a hypothesis and argue against the facts. That's not even science, Eddie. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, his gravity is a theory. Uh, it's not proven, right? That's not, there's no way you can measure it. Uh, didn't they claim though, didn't they claim that they just figured out or they just captured a graviton on graviton. or something? <laughs> what did they say? <laughs> Some more shit that we yeah, have to so take their word for. In gravitons. Yeah. In CERN, right? What do you think's going on in CERN? Like, what is that? Is that just a big tax scam as well? They're just building... Like you gotta build, you're gonna send a particle through all that shit. <laughs> How many miles is it? It's like a, it's like ten miles in 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 circumference or something. What is that? 
Like, what are they doing there? They're doing all the. They're just building. What are they? Think, what is that? <laughs> CERN. What are they well, doing? I think that there's a there's a lot of equipment set up and probably a lot of well-meaning people trying to discover things. Um, as far as I remember, Tim Berners Lee was worked at CERN and started the the internet. So that's at least one good thing came out of it. What what, what else? But do you what think? they're doing, accelerating these particles um, um, into this. Uh, how should I say, microscopic world of, of, of little balls and lots of empty space. Sounds very similar to the fairy story that we're getting told about the, the faraway galaxies and universes. So um, I'm, I've got a very, how should I say, open mind about that. Yeah. I think I think they'll be us smoking bongs and racing go-karts around that to see who can get the best that <laughs> thing. Did you say smoke bongs? What did you say? <laughs> I heard that part, right? I don't know. Hey, listen. I'm I'm one of the dumbest guys on the planet. I, I graduated early from high school. I wanted to get the fuck out. I never wanted to go to college. I never wanted to be in school. Um, I'm not very smart. The last book I read was uh, Jack Herrera's The Emperor Wears No Clothes. And then, uh, oh, You're Being Lied To was another book. Mm. Um, it's... Uh, I'm not that smart. I'm, I'm not very Chaco smart. Chaco has a name for the kind of smart that you are. Uh, CERN, you know, uh, could be an um, is probably just the, the most amazing scientific. Have you seen the opening ceremony for CERN, for CERN? Did you see this? Did anybody see this? There was an opening yeah, yeah, ceremony weird. that was satanic, and it, everyone had to they had like a dance uh, rehearsal. Dan it was crazy. I don't know. Again, I was wearing horns, like devil horns. You got to see this. I believe it. I don't even need to see it. It's like a satanic connection. I don't even connection. need to see it. I believe it. <laughs> a satanic connection. You know, it's like it's like. Uh, you know, when people people defend the government so much, it's like um, the government is such a all governments, you know, just the elite, right? The elite. There's it's so corrupt and it's so wicked. And everyone, everybody agrees with that. Nobody on the planet is going to say that their government is not corrupt. Nobody. Everyone says, yeah, they're corrupt. No, yeah, they're stealing tax. Everybody said you who, who, who you know, somebody who doesn't think the government's corrupt. I work at Victory MMA. And, they, and it's at least 60% military. They don't think the government's corrupt? And these guys all think I'm crazy. Yeah, but they they would agree if you asked them. I work them. with Jocko. Jocko, see, I was going to tell you, I wrote down he'll even things. tell you. He'll even tell you that the government is corrupt. Everybody will agree the government's corrupt, but when the, yeah. certain situations come up, they always got their back. Yeah. You know, they always got their back. I always mentioned this back. to Jocko. I mentioned yeah. Admiral Byrd to Jocko. I sat next to him and, and brought this up to him. And he was talking to me jujitsu, and I'm like, I'm gonna hijack the conversation, and I'm gonna throw some flat earth for a second, and, <laughs> and he's just gonna be cool with it. And it didn't fly. He smiled at me, nodded, he did his little thing, and he got up and went over and wrestled with Dean. But that there was like something to me that Jocko didn't want to talk about Admiral Bird. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Jocko's a high up like military guy that I work with in jujitsu. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I was going to say, I wrote down, you should get, try to get him on your podcast and, and ask him or, or, or vice hey, versa. I'm on afraid his. of him. No way. He'll, he'll kick my ass. He'll, he's a Navy SEAL. He'll stab me in the neck. He's a black belt. He's, he's, <laughs> but again, back to CERN. What the hell is that? What, what, it, what the fuck? Can you look that up, TJ? Look how big CERN is. Why does and that sending, matter to me? They're sending, they're, they're putting so much money into that, and that's, that's where supposedly everyone thinks the smartest people on the planet are from CERN, right? I mean, they're they're working there, they're doing some kind of, uh, some experiments, and like just like the International Space Station, those scientists, they're in there, oh, they're scientists, and they're experimenting. They're they got uh, I was on the Joe Rogan podcast, and and um. I brought up the fact that like, what have we gained from the space shuttle missions and the International Space Station being up there floating for 15 years in the thermosphere and the moon? What, what, how has society benefited from that at all? $18 billion a year. And then they got, and then uh, Jamie punches up a list of all the inventions that, that, uh, and, uh, that they invented. Like freeze dried. Yeah, you know, like baby food, like enriched baby food, and like new, Teflon. new, yeah, Teflon or some shit, like all that. Can you imagine how many billions, eighteen billion dollars a year? How much money has been put into that shit, man? For what? And they got a list. They got a list of inventions. Not they, enough, Eddie. They need more. They got a list, and it's all like stupid <laughs> shit. Like they invented. They needed to go up there to invent baby food. Like yo, if we didn't, we didn't fucking 
have this international space station, babies would would be uh, malnutrition. It's it's incredible. We should have cage fighting up in the in have you got the uh, space station for how much money they get. Gav, have you have, Gav, have you looked into the list of uh, uh, inventions that they figured out in the international space station? Have you Mayweather McGregor should do this boxing match on the space station for how much money is involved in this yeah. shit? Be entertaining. It's gibberish, no, right? No. I haven't, Eddie. I don't know what that list uh, would be. I mean, they, they blow better bubbles than they did beforehand, and I think they've got, you know, probably improved their CGI. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know where the building you know, goes. No. You know, uh, there's, um, you know, those zero G planes for a while there, and, and it's probably still like this, but people that are investigating and looking into the fakery of the ISS, they're looking into, okay, on a zero G plane, you got uh, 45 seconds of free fall or whatever. And then, so, so the debunkers are saying, look, this, this uh, film sequence is, you know, two minutes. There's no way it, it could have did it on a zero G plane. L like they're not improved. They probably got a zero G plane. They could, could, could do that for like five minutes now. You know what I mean? Like, like how, how are they not improving that? Like they just go higher and then they come down and now they could film for two minutes now or whatever. Right. Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah, I wouldn't take that as any proof just because the kid could do longer than forty-five seconds on the on yeah. the green screen. <laughs> yeah, people just people just have the, their backs. People have, I mean, they fake six moon landings, and you would think nobody would have their back. Like, like how would you have? How would you be defending an, an organization that fakes six moon landings and stole all that money? Hey. Like, how, how could? But People well, do. They'll know. defend it. They're like, no, man, that's not CGI. They're really floating in the International Space Station. They're floating. They're floating. Those people who fake the six moon missions, they're dead. They're gone. This is the new NASA. And then when you watch those, those press conferences after they land rovers on Mars, when you listen to that shit, Oh my God! Those are the—that's the worst acting ever. You, you know what I'm talking about, Jeff? They—they—they they, they explain it away as this, like it's something they've been doing. They've been touring around the country for three months, ten, saying the same stories over and over again. That's why they're sitting there looking that way. It's not because they're lying. It's because they're tired and exhausted. Yeah. And they're repeating the same shit over and over again. No, the, Mar the Mars ones are hilarious because they ask him. A guy gets up and asks a question and goes, "Can you describe the landing?" And the guy in charge is like, uh, I haven't seen it, it was, uh, it was, it was a non-benign, uh, where's, where's Michael at? He's always like calling someone out. I hope he's here. Where's Michael? Uh, yeah, it, uh, it went better than initially projected, but on rather the benign side of the spectrum. But yeah, where's Jonathan? Where's Jonathan? He's here. Oh, uh, he'll know. Um. All I'm, that's all I'm going to say, and that's all. The, the picture says everything. Look at that picture. That picture says everything. I'm done. Have you seen this shit? <laughs> and people just eat that shit up. They eat it up. I don't know. I, I gave up on that when I was like a kid, and I was excited about what NASA would say, and then it would just keep being like nothing. and be like, nobody's landed anywhere. There's no fucking aliens. It would be like some image. I'm like, okay. I knew that shit was bullshit when I was 12 years old. And the head of NASA, there's, there's, a, there's a clip with the head of NASA. Sorry, Ed, go ahead, no, go ahead. it seems to have just gone from, from bad to worse, right? I mean, at least when you see the three astronauts that apparently come back from the moon, they had the decency to look, to look sheepish, yeah? And to look disgusted with themselves. Yeah. Now you've just got a lot of actors high-fiving, telling jokes, and laughing at our faces, right? Yeah. So, you know, just, I think all we've done is gone from bad to worse. Yeah. And just like, is it, is it John? Is that your name, but I'm not sure. Who? You, 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 your man there with uh, the, the glasses, I'm not sure his name, John. Uh, Jeff Glover. I'm Jeff. 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 You, you had mentioned earlier, you know, that there's no launch of the ISS. There's no actual footage of them constructing it. You, you would think that these mammoth um, expeditions and um, creations of human beings would be documented by video, photograph, in great detail, but there is absolutely nothing. Yeah, and they show, they show, man, have you guys seen the footage of, you know, they, they uh, shelved the space shuttle. Like, like they're going backwards. We went to the moon in the 60s, and then we, we, we went to space shuttle, can only go in Earth's orbit. Then they shut down the space shuttle, went with the International Space Station. They're going backwards. They're, like, they the, they're, like they're backing, not the same thing. They're backing out of shit. What was that? They're not the same thing? What? The space station and the international... 
the International Space Station is the space station, and then there's the space shuttle. <laughs> Okay. Space shuttle and they dock these things dock with each Dude, other. Dude, there's video. Have you guys seen the video <laughs> of the space shuttle docking into the International Space Station? It's hysterical. It's and people believe it. Oh, that's that's real. Look, that's real. They believe that shit. It's, See, if, if people if people pulled it back to practicality again, if some as soon as somebody says to me, "Oh, you know, we we are going to space and space is a vacuum." So right away we have this claim that we live on Earth with a pressurized gaseous system. And they're telling us that this gas tapers off gradually until it meets this vacuum of space. If we go back to natural science again and everyday practical reality, we know that two opposing pressure systems must have a solid separation between them, or they will equilibrate. You know, so so for me, right away, I don't even need to go into you know NASA and you know what they're up to and trying to prove what they're up to. Based on that one claim alone, I know that they're talking crap. You know. Absolutely, man. I mean, I, I, it's a, it's incredible that you could watch it on YouTube. You could watch the space shuttle docking on, on into the International Space Station. You could see that, and it's so bad. It's so it looks like a, a 1970 kung fu theater movie. It's so bad. It's terrible. Like if you put that shit in a movie, it would be, it would be horrible. Shit in movies look way better than that. They could do way better than that. I don't, I don't know why they don't. I mean, when you watch that, like, uh, what was that movie where um, uh, Matthew McConaughey, Interstellar. When you watch that shit, that shit looks way better than the real shit. The real shit looks horrible. It looks like high school students put it together. And, and the, you know, another crazy thing about the International Space Station is they added that window that they look out. It's like, it's like maybe in seven pieces, like a circular window where they take... They, What's, what's it called? The cupola. Yeah, they built that shit while it was up there. They made that shit happen while it was up there. Yet they don't, they don't like film the unveiling of it. You know what I mean? It's just, boom, it just happened. We built it. It just happened. It's incredible. But <clears throat> now... Um, it beggars, it actually beggars belief, Eddie, you know? I mean, if you actually think about it very rationally and logically then anybody can see that it's just nonsense fairy stories. It's pink unicorns and fairy dust. Yeah. 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 Um, TJ, TJ is, is since, since the very first flat earth, uh, podcast we did, you've been curious. I, I wouldn't say that you're on the fence or anything like that, but you're definitely, uh, you've discovered a, a lot of, um, the bullshit that uh, the elite are into lately that we've talked about a uh, non flat earth and, and how do you feel right now about open minded, what we live on? I think the earth is round. Um, but that's just because mm -hmm. I have no indisputable proof to believe that it isn't. And I, I know what everyone is going to say. Oh, well, why, why do you question everything that's told to you? I have no reason to believe otherwise. And I have no reason to believe really that the earth is round, but it was instilled in me as a child that the earth was round, right? Yeah. So it's, it's hard for me to break away from that. Um, don't You don't want to, though? You have no desire to break away from that? The earth being round or, or not doesn't really affect me. Uh, things like the pedophilia stuff that you're talking about, like I have a son. I don't, I don't want that to be true. That scares me. Um, the thought that maybe some of the world's current events are staged and set up and people are paid to make those things happen, that stuff scares me. Is it true? I don't know. I'm open-minded to anything because conspiracy theories, I mean, largely the reason they exist is because they have legs, right? Like, they, yeah. they're plausible. At, at, at bare minimum, any conspiracy theory that actually takes off is plausible. And I'm never going to get mad at somebody for questioning something because, uh, I mean, if you believe world history, if we didn't question the British government, we wouldn't have a country here in the United States. So you have, you have to question everything to a certain extent. Uh, what do you say? Every now and then you interview a guy, Dell. He kind of has this attitude where he he doesn't re, it doesn't matter to him like whether it's flat or round. Why should it matter? That's well, a good question. Anybody? I I can, I can see why it matters. I mean, if if you know, for me, I've contemplated deeply in, uh, through my life. Um, I've pursued many avenues, spiritual, you know, scientific avenues, and if I have, if I don't have the psychological foundation which is where I'm at, then everything that I call a life for me would be delusional. 
because without proper grounding, without a proper understanding of exactly where I am, what the game is about, then I'm just forever prodding in the dark, trying to make the best of any delusion, cultural idea or way of life that is put to me. You know, it's a substitute for actually knowing. So for me, it's hugely important. And for me, a lot of the degenerative behaviour that we see that's being allowed to, to this very day is based on that. People are running around in bewilderment and ignorance. They have been sold this false idea of who they are, where they are, what life is about. And for me, it's hugely important that it is the foundation of anything you would call a life. So some, some people can have a delusional life that is comfortable, but for me it's still a delusion because it is not grounded or rooted in anything truthful. Let, let me ask you guys this. Is is the here, is, here. is the moon round? No. It's, for me it's a fallacy because we don't live up there and you don't get anything measurable in regards to the shape of earth that you're standing upon by looking at the sky. It's a, it's a fallacy. It's a red herring. Gab, what do you think about the moon? Yeah, I think it looks like a disc. It has the appearance of a disc. But um, since, again, it's a visible phenomena and uh, you need to look very carefully at exactly how your eye works and how things like perspective work, um, there's nothing you can say unless you can physically touch it and tangibly touch it. And since we all don't believe that they ever went to the moon, then we have no information about that. So as Dell quite correctly says, it will give you absolutely no information about the shape of the Earth just by looking at images or at the sky. That, that is one thing I will say. I don't think we went to the moon. I think that was a tactic to try to win the Cold War and, you know, uh, establish superior dominance, which to me, Eddie, when you say we, we went backwards, how do you know that maybe we're not actually going forwards for the first time? Like, you know, maybe we, we set out so big, oh, we've gone to the moon, we've landed, here's the flag, look at this, it's not in the Hollywood basement, don't worry about it. But now we're actually getting uh, advancements, but because they're real... They seem so far behind uh, where we were allegedly in what? the 60s. I don't understand the question. So, like, the, so, 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 think about this. In 1969, we landed on the moon, right? Quote unquote. If we didn't actually land on the moon, where were we? Were we actually even launching men into space? Okay, so now we are launching people into space. We have an international space station. That's not you, real, though. You, uh, the international space station is not that, real. That's what you say. I mean, I believe that that's just real. I mean, th this is we're talking I, about. Well, now we're talking about beliefs. Well, this is where I I, I lost Eric yep. Dubay about satellites. Uh, satellites are real. The, to cover up satellites would be just a ridiculous amount of how, finagling. How how would you cover up satellites? Well, I mean, you would have so Eric said that everything on um, satellite is actually just on the ground in transmitters and repeaters. Transmitters and repeaters and that signal will not be messed up by uh, the sun, which is what degrades um, uh, the uh, the signal of satellite. So when it's cloudy, the if, if it's not coming from a satellite, that actual signal should be exponentially stronger than if it wasn't cloudy because it's the, the clouds act like a uh, insulation from the, the sun and whatnot. So when it's cloudy and you have direct TV or, or if it rains, your television signal doesn't work. If you were going to say that that wasn't from a satellite, someone actually has to mess with your satellite signal to keep up but, the myth. But, but a satellite uh, or a TV, you know, the old uh, TV antennas worked. That that was that was worked off like radios. Yeah, it's over so, the air. Right. Yeah. So that's right. That's what direct TV is too. No. same thing. Yeah, but, but and weather would affect but, it. No, weather no, does no, affect that because but no, 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 it's but, a signal coming up your yeah, antenna. Ra radio signals are better when it's cloudy and raining than it is when it's sunny. So when it's cloudy and raining because of the water, no, it's it's it, it, no, it's it's because the sun is not destroying it. Like the worst thing that is for a radio signal is is sun rays destroying. It. Well, okay. what does that have to do with the satellite? Maybe it just so, destroys no, no, the no, signals what, what coming off the antenna. The, the, the signal is destroyed or distorted when there are clouds because it can't break through the clouds. No, but what so I'm saying... So if, if it was on the ground, it shouldn't actually distort when it's it's raining. Okay. What do you got to say about that, Gav? Yeah, yeah well, I mean, let, let's pull it back to a practical example. If I drive down the motorway here where I am, um, then and look at the signal that I've got on my phone that's apparently, you know, calculating my GPS and using satellites to tell me where I am. And if I've got no service going, you know, 50 kilometers from here in any one direction, but as soon as a tower comes 
and I can see the tower, then my phone gets a signal again, and I can do that on and off all the way down the motorway. Yeah, travel eight hours and see that the signal comes and goes, and it comes when there's a land tower that I can see. Um, and but that's your it, cell that phone. For me just, if somebody was to tell me that they can, a probe can send a selfie from Pluto billions <laughs> of miles through space, with a technology 15 years ago and bounce it off a satellite and send it down here, and yet I can't get a signal on my waterway. Sorry, guys, you know, something's horribly wrong with that story. But, but a cell phone... You'll never see an, a, a TV antenna pointing to up to the sky. You know, they don't point up to the sky. A, a Yours doesn't, mine doesn't. A, a self, well, well, your satellite dish does in your yard or on your, your well, roof. It points, points to the, the south. It, it doesn't, doesn't go point up. In, up southern hemisphere, yes. You know? Yeah, yeah that's because that's where the, the satellite is, is positioned. Um, go, talking about your your cell phone GPS, cell phone navigation like your Waze or Google Maps, it doesn't run off a of GPS. That runs off triangulating your your cell phone tower. So yeah, sure. So 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 why do you say then we, we that satellites exist? Why do you need satellites if it can all work land based? Uh, because okay. So again, if if there is a satellite or if there isn't a satellite and they're just all ground repeaters then why would the signal degrade during rain in, in, in clouds? It would actually be stronger if it's insulated from the sun. The, the reason your satellite doesn't work well when it snows or it's cloudy is because it can't get to your receiver through the clouds coming down from the satellite. Well, I think that's an oversimplified explanation. If there's snow in my satellite dish, then I don't get a signal either. So. I think you're oversimplifying, and I don't know where you got that information from, but I don't believe it to be true. All right. I, I'm well, not passionate enough about to, to, to fight this, so. No, no. <laughs> no that's fine. But even, even again, I work in radio. That's how I know how radio waves work. But, but um, again, as I pointed out before, you, you're probably postulate that they're sending satellites into the vacuum of space beyond our gaseous pressurized atmosphere and there is no solid separation between these two opposing pressure systems. I mean, again, you, you just look at that claim and understand that it's total nonsense. And if you doubt it, then you, you would have to go to natural science, go to practicality and see if you can recreate that claim. How about a skip? How would you guys explain like a skip on a CB radio? If the earth is flat, then a skip should never work. With a skip? A skip, like if you are in Alaska and you're using a CB radio, you can uh, skip the radio wave to basically the other side of the planet, and all of a sudden you're talking to someone that it, it shouldn't be working radio wave wise because the radio wave would go, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to to work because it would run out of steam essentially. I'll look up a skip and get you a technical definition because I'm not doing it justice, but um, I'll report back. I don't know what a skip is. Yeah, I mean, it certainly wouldn't work on a ball then, would it? Well, it, it bounces off something. I I got to figure it out. Hold on. I, I don't I don't see what difference that, that would make to whether it's curved or, or flat though. If it's bouncing yeah. off something in the in the cloud or the thermosphere or some part. That's uh, all. Come, all comes back to this question. We're trying to establish the dimensions of Earth and satellites, the Moon. You know, many of these red herrings are not really um, important. But we're talking about the shape of the Earth. We're looking for measurement things that we tangible substances that we can use in order to establish what the dimensions of Earth actually are. You know, so, so satellites and moons and stars and the sun, none of these things are of any relevance whatsoever with regards to the shape of the Earth. But they are kind of connected, though. I mean, satellites are kind of connected. It's kind of like, uh, don't worry, we got this. We got space handled. Uh, you don't have any authority. We got the authority. We got satellites. We got the space station. We've been to the moon. You guys aren't allowed here. We got this covered. Everything's fine. I, it, it is connected to. It's just more lies. It's just like proving. Yeah, it's part you of can't, the sophistry. Yeah, it, yeah, it's proving uh, uh, even another. The more lies someone tells, it's like um, like let's say there's this um, uh, uh, groupie groupie chick and she's just she's just she's one of those chicks who does ecstasy she gets drunk she goes to the club and she has sex with all your friends and 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 just everybody in the neighborhood and in town she's just and then someone comes up to you and to, and her name's lisa and one of your buddies comes in and say hey dude you know lisa fuck jeff you would believe that without any proof because you know that she's fucked everybody so and even if she didn't fuck jeff 
She's still a whore. Which she probably. You know what I mean? And you probably should believe it, even if it is if you don't have the evidence. You know what I mean? It's like that. It's like all these lies, yet you're defending them on this lie, like like a serial killer, like a guy who's killed thirty people, and then your your buddy who's an expert on this killer, he says he actually killed someone in Florida too. And even if he lied about that, would it matter? He's still a killer. And do you really need proof? You're like, you know, I don't believe he killed that dude in Florida until I see proof. Until I see proof. I don't, anytime someone tells me anything that the elite are doing that sounds plausible in my head, I believe it. <laughs> and if it's not true, they're still evil. So I just don't, I, I'm not going to be the kind of guy that says, you know what? The government's super corrupt and they do super evil things, but... I need to see evidence about this one particular thing. I don't believe this one particular thing. And guys will do that. They'll hold on. They'll hold on. It's like um, it's like uh, um, a friend of mine said, uh, we were arguing about chemtrails. It's on and on and on. And then he goes, um, he finally just says, if, if we're arguing and arguing about chemtrails. And then he finally says, okay, some of those things are chemtrails, but not all of them. Not all. So he was like, it wasn't, you were wrong about most of them. You were wrong. You were dead wrong about most of them. And it's like, like, what are you talking about? Even if some of them are chemtrails, you just admitted that I was right. It's like, um, if, uh, if, if you got paranoid that your wife was poisoning you, 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 you're thinking, damn, she's poisoning my fucking milk. She's poisoning my cornflakes. She's poisoning, uh, uh, my crackers. She's poisoning my oatmeal. And everyone thought you were crazy. They're like you fucking crazy loon. Your wife was not poisoning all your shit. And then it comes out that she was, she was only poisoning your crackers, right? She was, but she wasn't poisoning your milk or your oatmeal or your cornflakes, you know, for someone to say, dude, you were wrong about the fucking milk. And the cornflakes, you're paranoid. She was only poisoning your fucking crackers, dude. That, that's like being a You know what I mean? It's like, are you fucking retarded? Are you fucking retarded? That's that's like being a little bit dead. You know? Yes. I'm only a little yeah, dead. About yeah, this, uh, yeah. No, no, I've had people argue people. about that, about, about chemtrails. Like, arguing how I was wrong. Yeah, you were, they only, they only, only 5% of them are chemtrails. But the rest aren't. The rest aren't. The rest are just regular contrails. Like, so, I got a definition of a skip for you. Um, and, and it may work with the, the Earth being flat. Um, apparently, a skip is when your CB radio shoots a signal straight up and it bounces off the Earth's atmosphere and then goes hundreds of thousands of miles away, up, out, down, everywhere. I don't know anything about so that. So it doesn't bounce yeah. off a satellite. That's, that's, it that's something. No, no, no. That's it doesn't something. bounce off a satellite, but it bounces off the the uh, the atmosphere. If that, so if we don't need satellites. If that's a fun, if that's something that um, you could read somewhere, or that I, I don't, I don't know. I don't well, know. There, I'm, I'm not a CB yeah. scientist. There, I, I don't know. There, there's some articles online that you'll find about. Again, that's uh, articles. And right, no, no, no. no. There, there's articles yeah. online explaining the skip uh, to a plain Earth as well. Yeah, so, there it's all out there. I don't yeah, I don't think it either proves satellites or gives us any information whether it's a ball or a flat plane. So well, why do you guys not believe in satellites? That's what I'm curious about. Cuz I, I don't believe in space. So if you if you're telling me that they've maybe got very high things uh, circling around us then that's for me different, but if you're defining satellites as something that goes into space as we as the Star Trek defines it, um, then I don't believe in it, so it so, can't be real. Have you guys ever seen like a satellite go overhead? How could you? You can't I've even seen see things blink you, in the sky. Yeah, Is I mean, that I, what you mean? I, I, I don't remember. I, I don't remember exactly, but I was a small child and we were duck hunting one time. My dad's like, "Look, a satellite went by." Like, oh, okay. That that blinky thing's a satellite. I know it wasn't an airplane, <laughs> but I was told it was a satellite. There you go. That's it. Oh, get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, why, why why are you dismissing my child? Guys? Hey, you know nice. what? Uh, hey, I'm not saying I don't believe you. I believe you. Okay, I really do. Well, I, don't, I don't know why I do, but I believe I believe you saw a satellite. Well, that's my, it. My, my end, dad, end of discussion. My dad also told me some fat guy in a red suit brought presents. So I don't know. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Uh, uh, um. <laughs> But I think that's, that shows very clearly that w what we're here talking about, right? We're talking about beliefs that have been instilled in us um, either from a very early age or through, you know, constant programming, constant brainwashing, 
constant films, and it's quite hard to question your beliefs and to throw them away and to actually sift through what you actually know. Um, well, and it gets very uncomfortable. We see that when we interview people, and you have to be very Socratic about it and gentle, and, and you know, you, you break them and then you fix them again, so to speak. So it's, it, it's not, nobody likes having their beliefs questioned. Well, l let me ask all of you guys this, because obviously you need to question everything to come to the conclusion that things like the Earth isn't round. I asked Eric Dubay this, and I think he got upset and called it a straw man's theory, which I don't even understand what that means. But I, I want to ask you, if you guys question everything, what do you just accept as fact without having to experience it yourself? The example I used with, with Mr. Dubay was, I've never met anyone with tuberculosis, but I believe tuberculosis exists. Where do you draw the line of what is real and what isn't? That's a good question. Well, things have to become, they have, they have to have practicality. If you're dealing with actual substance and practicality, then, you know, for me, that's part of objective reality. But then there becomes a separation when people start telling me um, substances behave in certain ways that, that goes against all practicality and all observation. I mean, you know, it's like, that, that's pretty much it. I, uh, I was on YouTube the other day, and I can try to pull up the uh, video if you guys want me to, but uh, in Russia, you can get up in a MIG, I think it's a MIG-21, and it goes at supersonic speeds. You can pay to do this, and they'll take you so high that you can see the curvature of the Earth in the airplane. Do you have proof? And you that? believe that? Well, I mean, you can go do it. So How do you know? Well, you, you can go do it. You just, Who did uh, it? This guy on YouTube. Why don't you? Are YouTube. Gonna... YouTube. <laughs> Come on, man. It, it, How come YouTube is good when you need it, but when I need it, it's I, never good? I've never said that YouTube isn't good. Oh, come on. <laughs> I haven't. Like, again, like, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just having a conversation. No, but, but you're talking about something that you, you, you said. You said uh, some guy went up and saw the curve. Well, you can do this. Like, you can no, no, but what I'm personally. saying, but you got to understand where we're coming from. We're There's discussing. video of it. Where, where's the video? I'll get it. Is it it's, are you sure it's on a fish-eyed lens? I, I don't even at all anytime someone's ever claimed any video or any picture of uh, high altitude like that Red Bull jump that's right uh, 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 retards can pick out fish eyed lenses it's so obvious but then people will think that's the curve of the earth so um, I I'm gonna sit here and guarantee you and promise you you show me a picture of or video of whatever you're talking about, this Russian high altitude plane, if there's curvature, it's going to be an obvious fish eyed lens. Talk amongst I'm, yourselves. I'm, I'll, I'll I'm predicting it. I'm predicting oh. it. We look, at, we look at this shit all day, TJ. Every night I listen, I look at this shit. I've never, the only reason it has legs, the only reason Flat Earth has legs is because, um, man, there's some serious shit wrong with what we've been told. Because we have eye the only reason there's it has legs is because we have there's eyes. There's absurdities, there's paradoxes, contradictions. There's there's more than just lies being told. You know. Yeah, this isn't you Scientology. Every day with your eyes. <laughs> People think it's Scientology. It sounds like it. I thought it was. I thought it was a, a CIA. Oh, nice. Sorry. What, what about all the secrets they keep, like the Area Fifty One, and the um. The Antarctic Treaty, the places we're not allowed to go. Like, at what point do we get to find out what the hell all that stuff is? I don't think how, it's, how I don't many think it's secrets. Gonna I don't think it's going to happen. When are they going to stop treating us like babies? I would like to know what's going on there. If they're not treating us like babies. They're just psychopaths that, that eat babies. And um, they wish you were a baby, as a matter of fact. I, I feel good knowing I could tap all those dudes out. I'll tell you that right now, guys. <laughs> that really does make me... I, I get a little bit of joy out of knowing I could... I'm a oh, plot really? to all those motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm putting this on the screen over here. Okay. Right, you got you to bear with me while I page through it. Okay. Can you guys see this on your screen? No. Hang on. No. Thank you. Can. What about now? Yep. Yeah. See, look at the little spinny thing. That's round. Fish-eyed lens. You could already tell. Is it a fish-eyed lens? Yeah, you could already you could already tell. Fish-eyed oh, yeah, lens. Yeah, yeah. Fish-eyed lens. Cold. That's it, any 
any well, base. Look at that. that any that, that's base, not a fish-eyed lens. That's the canopy of the lens. thing. That's like, a fish-eyed lens. The, the canopy of the jet right. is circular. That's, it just curved the other direction. It just yeah, went upside it down and it curved goes, the other way. Yeah, that's the sign of a, of a fish-eyed lens. Come on, TJ. Come bitch. on, TJ. Didn't I predict that? Didn't I just predict it? I'm like, <laughs> Why you got to be mean about it? I'm like Nostradamus. I didn't, I didn't say you were wrong. No, I didn't say you said I was wrong. I was just making a Nostradamus prediction. <laughs> Every time you see a curve, just complete the circle and see if it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> people are people believe that shit though they look yeah. at them like look the curve yep. meanwhile there's amateur uh, balloons that go up 120,000 feet and zero curve zero you can't see shit and you can watch that on youtube all day no curve well i tried no but you know what tj i love the fact that you're battling and debating it's making the show yeah, more give us another one give us another one, one. What else you got? embrace embrace your role Pretend like you really hate flat earth and you think we're dumb. Well, but I mean, what's another point? Another point that that you could bring up? I, I would love to argue nine eleven with you, but you convinced me the day that we had uh, Richard Gage in studio. I told you, man. That was something. I tried to tell everybody. That was something. Architects and engineers for nine eleven truth. <laughs> Richard Gage. People thought people thought I was crazy in the early two thousands for preaching that that marijuana was good for you. And they thought I was crazy. Now what? Just a fact. Now now. What? So uh, let me ask you this. This is way off topic, and you don't have to spend any time on this any more than you want to. But I think testosterone is the new marijuana. For a long time, marijuana was stigmatized for being a party drug. I think testosterone has a lot of medical benefits, but everyone looks at it as just a steroid. Um, I, I agree with you. And uh, um, steroids are flat. <laughs> <laughs> now give us another like another question like does flat earth doesn't make sense to me because what about this oh i'm, I'm curious uh i mean you say the elite the illuminati like i'm curious what you think really makes the world go around like who who are the elite what qualifies the people with all the money I'm sure it has something to do with the international bankers. I'm sure it has something to do with the Rothschilds. Rothschilds could be a big, uh, that could be a hoax. Maybe they created the Rothschilds to, to, so that we can be accusing the Rothschilds of this and that. Maybe there are no Rothschilds. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. But whoever has all the money, those are the ones that are controlling shit. I just call them the Illuminati. Maybe, they're the, maybe they call themselves the Illuminati. Maybe they don't. Or you could say the elite. You could say the globalists. You can say... The people running shit, the do they establishment. Any, do they have anything to do with the Masons? Do you believe all that stuff? Uh, yeah, I think, I think. Um, well, when all the astronauts are Freemasons and it seems like, uh, you know, like Neil deGrasse Tyson's a Freemason. It just, it seems like all the, all the, anybody who's uh, internationally famous throughout time, I think they're part of, I don't think you can be internationally famous throughout time like Isaac Newton right. and, and Einstein. I think all those guys, they're part of the trick. They're do part you, of the club. Do That's you, what I think. Do you think that there are a lot of Masons then, a lot of Freemasons that are not actually in on the bit? Yeah, the low-level guys. Like, okay. you know, like uh, you say, I work for the UFC. The UFC is the, maybe, uh, uh, like, you, do you think the Fertitas brothers, when they owned the UFC, were telling their employees what was really going on? You know, just uh, it's just like I'm. You think I tell my, the white belts what, my, I, what I'm gonna do? White yeah. belts have no idea what I'm gonna do. Yeah, yeah. I don't tell them. Sh I don't even learn their names. So I don't tell them what's going on. All right, how about I'm this? I'm just kidding, white belts. I love you. <laughs> how about this? I'll bring it back to to MMA for a brief moment. Pat Militich is a Freemason. Michael Chavello is a Freemason. They're probably low level. I'm challenging him to a super fight right now, Pat. You and me, son. Bring your Freemason boys. I'm gonna donkey guard you. <laughs> I think. Uh, um, uh, the people at the top, maybe it's maybe it's not the Freemasons. I don't know. It's just a pretty. It's a coincidence that all these famous people in positions of power, the astronauts, the Freemasons. I think, uh, I think there's a club like a you know a, a, a Illuminati type club, and Freemasonry is part of that. Maybe there's a few clubs like that. Maybe it's not the only one, but an awful lot of fucking Freemasons aren't positions of power and then when you look at albert pike he wrote like in the 1870s or something he wrote the freemason bible and it's talking about lucifer and how that's the god they worship and that's satan and uh 
Um, this is where I get lost with all this stuff. This is where you start losing me with all the, this guy said that. I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't care about any of that. I've never seen curvature. I've been high as fucking airplanes and on it's mountains, all and it's, it's all, all flat. It's all connected. I know, but that, like, that's what, again, that's where you lose me, man. Because words, words get distracting. You know what I'm saying? With what I've seen, I've never seen curvature. I've been high as fuck. You know what I'm saying? I've seen water, the way water works, just. The things I can observe, I see flat earth. I hear a lot of talk and a lot of like Bible stories that also say flat earth. I hear a lot of like, this guy said this guy, this whatever, blah, blah, blah. What I see is what I see, man. And I see flat earth. I I'm curious. What, have you guys ever looked into uh, like string theory or um, John Titor? Have you ever heard of John Titor? Anybody? Gav, string theory? Yeah, I know, I know string theory. Yeah, It's in the name theory, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but have you have you guys ever heard about John Titor, the guy that showed up and said he said he was a time traveler, posted some stuff oh, online, no, no. predicted YouTube really before. I believe that. it. I don't know why, but I do. <laughs> like, like, do you, do you think things like that could be real? <laughs> time traveling? Uh, no, no. I, I think again we need to pull this back to what is practically you know provable, what is observable. You know, trust your common senses. Go back to natural science. All the hearsay, imagery, and all these other things, you know, um, you, they're, they're the red herrings. They're there to distract us. So can I, can I, ask, I, I don't guys... think you can find any real knowledge that way. Mm. So I agree with the, sorry, I've forgotten your name. If, uh, if I was a shell, if, 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 I was a, me. if I was a paid shell, I'd go to flat earth conventions and just like constantly interrupt with like, do you think Bigfoot is real? Star Wars is real. What about man? Loch Ness? Well, let, let me ask you this then. Let me ask you this one. <laughs> I, would, I would be a great shell. I would oh, be fucking dude, you shit would out. crush the shit out I would of say, that. Folk, I would, oh, I would say flat earth. I would somehow connect flat earth to big, Bigfoot. I would make them like somehow jump. Don't give them any ideas, like, man. There's a, it has everything to do with Bigfoot. What about, what about aliens? You think that we're the only intelligent life? Are you guys there? biblical flat earthers? No. No. No, no not right. at all. No, I'm not religious in any way. And I think the question needs to be shelved until we understand where we are. Um, yeah. I do entertain thoughts about creation and where it comes from and, you know, if we are created. But I'm, I've been an atheist all my life. And since I've uh, looked at the flat earth, then I do entertain more thoughts about that than I did before which I think was part of the indoctrination to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm not religious in any way. Hey, you got to think about it, though. If we prove, if it's proved 100% and we all accept it, the earth's flat, the Bible was right. So that means there is a God. That means y'all's going to have to go to church on Sunday again. So be careful what you wish for. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> like Sundays, that. man. That's like, that's like a three hours out of your day. You, you say the Bible says that the Earth is flat. Do, do all do all uh, religions believe that the Earth is flat? I mean, they they fight amongst themselves on that. For I, sure. I think they, I, they wouldn't all agree. As with far that. as I know, as far as I know, I think all the ancient religions, the Mayans, the Hindus, I think they had a flat Earth model. I think I think that's why uh -huh. today we believe ah oh, dumb people, religious people believe in flat Earth because they actually did. Is this is that correct? I'm not that sure i think i saw an eric dubay video and he was talking about um or maybe it was a santos bonacci you guys know that guy santos bonacci. Yeah, I've heard of him. you heard of him he's 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 really into uh tying hinduism with flat earth and he's saying that they had it all like uh i don't know i i, I gotta go back I, it was a late one night i had too much seizure medication and um, I got lost in some Hinduism and flat earth. I was like, what is this? Takes you into veganism. <laughs> flat earth led me to vegan videos. Are you serious? You said that earlier, Jeff. Is that true? Is that Absolutely true? true. Really? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Uh, isn't Eric Dubay a vegan? All these guys. Because I don't know. The flat earth video leads you to people who are hiding great things from us and exposing horrible things to us. And one of them is the way they treat animals and the way they treat animals that we're eating. And then, you know, I saw, I got baked, you know, I saw that, I was very empathetic. And the next day I was like, dog, I'm not f touching anything that has animals in it anymore. Look at this. Are you vegan now? You're I'm vegan? trying and it's hard. Are you guys vegan? You guys vegan at all? Yeah, I've been vegan for about three years. Oh shit, you guys- I'm trying and it's hard. Guys... This, is, this is flat earth lifestyle. Yeah, like let, let's jiu jitsu. Let's, flat earth. Jiu -jitsu well, very well. I, I think we need to get in on the ground floor here and start making t shirts and uh, 
You know, we can borrow the Where's MMA vibe. Where's borrow the MMA vibe. We can uh, do uh, flat out clothing, like tap out, but flat out. This How about it? veganism huh? flat earth led me to this drink, basically turmeric. I was dying. My joints were killing me. I was doing jujitsu every day and I was flat earthing and I was learning about new diets. And I was like, what do I do? Why do my, my elbows, knees, wrists, ankles, every joint hurts, not the muscles, the joints, dog. What do I do? And the guys, I, you know, did some research and it led me to turmeric. Started taking turmeric every day and I swear my joints haven't hurt since. I feel great. This is one thing that I'm going to say and this is why <clears throat> I believe that Flat Earth has a little tiny bit of legs. We need you to be on the other side, TJ. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I, I think you're all wrong. But <laughs> that, good, said, good, there you go. that said, the speed at which the Earth is apparently turning. And like I was brought, this was all brought to my attention with this stupid eclipse last week. Um... How come we're not just flying off everything? That's what I don't understand. Exactly. Like, we're going way too fast. 600,000 miles right. an hour. One way, 600,000 miles an hour. It's like being in a car, right? You're in a car inside of a ball. You're, you're, you're in a ball, but you're in a car. The car's going 600,000 miles an hour, right? Right. But you're spinning in that ball 1,000 miles an hour, and then you're skidding sideways. 60,000 miles an hour. See, I can't even get on the tilt of Is that correct? Did I like, did I do that right? It's like you're going three, yeah, that's approximately three, right. three incredible I mean, motions at the same time, and we don't feel shit. You yeah, know? exactly. Let's pull it back to that. There's not one person on this uh, earth that can claim that he can feel any spin whatsoever. And um, if you have to be able to trust your senses, right? If you didn't trust your senses, you would be a dead man within a week. You wouldn't be able to cross the road. You wouldn't be able to feed yourself. You'd miss your mouth when you tried to drink a cup of water. Yes. So, you know, if you deny that your senses actually, you know, that you can trust them, then, you, then you know, you're, you're on a, you're on to buns, as they say in Scotland, you know? It's, it's a completely fallacious argument. So the fact that nobody here on this earth can even feel themselves spinning is also proof enough that we aren't. You would think like every now and then, I mean, they claim we're going 600,000 miles an hour one way. And to me, it's 600,000 miles an hour is 600,000 miles an hour. It isn't like, oh, no, in space time, it's actually barely moving. Or like something. When, when it's 600,000 miles an hour. When, like, when do you come to the end of the road? You know, the crazy thing about it is people have no problem believing in endless balls and endless planets, endless balls. No, well, I, no problem. Like, oh, yeah, the, the universe is endless, endless balls. But when you say endless plane, oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> How could there be anything, an endless plane? No, but endless balls. Yes, yes. I, endless balls. That's fine. No, they have no problem. Anything that Neil deGrasse Tyson said, he could just say, uh, the earth is, we, is actually a pair. And people are like, okay, the Earth is actually a pair. The can, Earth is a pair. Can, hear, did you hear the Earth's a pair? You know, the grass ties on Saturday. It's a pair. And people just believe that shit. It's incredible. Where's it's the a, picture? It's a pair now. It's Show a me pair. this pair. Can, can you say endless balls like three more times? Hey, you know what? I'm going to. Can you find that Neil deGrasse Tyson pair Earth? Find yeah. that and play that uh, shit. I'll grab it real quick. I, I think this is why people right. believe in endless things is. Whether or not you believe... Not on an endless plane. Yeah, endless, endless balls, endless, yes. Endless sure, plane. Yeah. Infinite possibilities have to be accepted by human beings because no matter what, something always was. Whether we were created by something or whether we just happened from a Big Bang, you, 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 can't, you can't tell me that there was a beginning of time. Time you, always the just the big existed. Bang, the Big Bang Theory sounds like, like a retard came up with that. Really? Right? Big Bang. Like, Why? Does everything that's bloated. <laughs> Sounds like we're blessed tonight. <laughs> the Big Bang, and people Duh. jump onto that. The big, like, it's, everything just exploded. See, it has I, to do with sex. It just, it was a big fucking explosion. But there's a bunch of gas, <laughs> like, there's a bunch of gas and stuff in, in, Space. That's like, what I'm talking about, that TJ. That that's exactly what I'm talking about. That would explain why stars are on fire. Who knows what those things are? Those are lights. I mean, Here, here's the problem. How does something come from nothing? Yeah. Exactly. We're human beings, so we can't wrap our heads around that. But it's but if true. But you, if you don't believe in God, or you do believe in God, God always just was. 
And if you don't believe in God, something always just was. No, you know what? You guys, you guys don't know it yet, but you guys are going to have to find your first communion shoes, dust them off. You guys are going to have to start going to church. All you guys, if flat earth is true, get those first communion shoes out now. I'm it's a, happening. Hey, if, the, a, if the earth is flat and the, the, the lights over us are revolving around us and we're the center of well, the universe, if that's true, yeah, if that's true, these guys have to damn, this. damn, we might, th there is a creator. It might not be that bearded guy hanging out in the clouds with Jesus. It might not be that dude, but there is a, I believe, even before Flat Earth, I believed in a creator. I was, I was brought up Catholic, hardcore, was an altar boy. I just wanted to go to heaven. And then once I learned that uh, not everybody was Catholic, I thought everybody was Catholic. Everybody in my neighborhood was Catholic, and, and mostly everybody in my elementary school were Catholic, except for there was a Protestant guy, and there was a Jehovah's Witness guy. I didn't know what the fuck they were, but it, uh, everybody... Everybody was a Catholic. And then once I found out there was Jews and Muslims and all these other religions, right there at 11, I thought, okay, we've been lied to. There's no way all these different religions can think they're right. We're just, we've been brainwashed. So then I became atheist until um, I turned 21. And at 21, uh, I, um, I was standing in Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard in front of the Roxy. And uh, oh, I was I was walking by the Roxy with my buddy John, uh, and we were about to go to the Rainbow. And there was this this homeless bum dude playing guitar in front of the Roxy, and he had this sign that was all about saving the forest. And, and he was just dirty, just a dirty bum, just trying to save the world and save the forest. And uh, John was probably about twenty yards behind me, and I walked by him, and I kind of looked at him, had my long hair down to my my waist, it took me 30 minutes to blow dry. It had my big hoop earrings in. 1991, I was full blown. I was about as metal as you can get. And I looked at this homeless dude playing guitar and he walked up to me and he said, hey man, if I guess your birthday, will you sit here and listen to me? And I said, yeah, <laughs> go for it. And he said, May 5th, May 15th. I'm like, what the fuck? How did this guy guess my birthday? So I wasn't convinced at that. So I said, John, I go, John, John, come here, come here, come here, come here. I said, guess his birthday. And he looked at him and he said, March 31st. And right there, I'm like, holy shit. What are the odds that he guesses both our birthdays? This homeless dude? Well, it's you know, one, so from it, that point, from that point on, I knew there was something else. There was some kind of dimension that some either some spirit told him the answer or he could read my mind and there's some stuff that we can't see that he can see and he had some powers i didn't know how to explain it i mean what are the odds that a guy comes up to you and guesses you and your birthday your, well, your... one in 365 no twice though yeah i don't know that one twice. that's <laughs> twice in a row back to back that it's astronomical I got but anyway but anyway i got your neil but anyways but anyways, let me finish my story. You sure. can put that on a hold. But um, then I became agnostic. I, from that point on, I thought, damn, there, I never forgot about that day. I never, for, but I never forgot. There's some shit we don't know. Because up to that point, I was like, you know, we're going to die and just go in the dirt. We came from nothing. I believe in Big Bang. I was a space documentary junkie. I'd watch <laughs> space, science channel discovery, all that <laughs> shit. I just wanted to watch space shit, neutron star, supermassive black hole, all this shit, fucking 200,000 light years away. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Light years, holy shit. And then I became agnostic. And then once I did um, uh, uh, DMT and I went into the other dimensions, I knew, okay, there is a creator. Once you do DMT, you're like, oh shit, this is just like a little vacation for us. There's a whole, there's, a, there's another dimension when you do DMT or ayahuasca, you uh, you go into that other dimension. People say, "Oh, it's in your head." I didn't create that. Trust me. If I if I cre if I had to create something, it wouldn't look nothing like this. It would look like shit. I can't even draw a, a stick figure. And um, so at that point, I knew there's got to be a creator, right? So you could, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to preach or anything like that. So no, no, for, I love so for this. me, so for me, flat Earth, if if it, it it's it just even proves more that to me, not just to me, I'm not trying to convince anybody, to me, there is a creator. This is just verifying it even more. This is a special place that we're at. If, if the stars 
or those lights are rotating around us. But you don't us. think it's Jesus in the Bible story, Abraham story? No, no, not, I, don't, no I don't I think it's anything like that. But you, don't, think, but you also don't like, throw that idea out the window either. No, I think those, I think like uh, that God and Jesus and, and all those biblical stories, I think it's a, a Jack and Jill way to explain like to kids. Like you know allegories? I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah, like metaphors and stuff like that. Do you think it's all relatively the same language, but things get it lost in translation? It also says kill homosexuals in those yeah. books too, so... Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I know. Of course, most of the stuff in the Bible, of course, when you know, you, you could kill someone for but, for uh, charging interest in like the Old Testament and that kind of shit. Well, let's just say, let's just say that religion is real, one hundred percent verifiable. It's real. But what religion? It, what religion? It doesn't really matter because my point is, is like if you have a story and it's passed down from generation to generation, it's like if I tell Jeff something, he goes and tells someone on the street, and it goes. It's a big game of telephone. Yeah. And now you're talking about telephone with different languages. So all of a sudden, some guy's going to tell the story. He's like, you know what? I don't really like gay people. So I'm going to go tell him to kill all the gay people. I'll yeah. write that down in the story. Yeah, exactly. And now it's been passed over, you know, for, for a thousand years, and it looks nothing like the original message. Yeah, yeah. Play that Neil deGrasse Tyson. All right. Uh, so, so you spin. You know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flies. Like, can you out. start it like from the top? Just like right. you, start just from the top. Right top in the middle. Of it. So you're right there. So, so ten seconds. Earth into it. throughout its life, even uh, when it formed, okay, it was spinning, and it got a little wider at the, the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere; it's an it's oblate, and officially it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But it's killing me. Can you just play it? I, I, I'm playing it. Oh, okay. It's just buffering. TJ, you had one job, bro. You had one job. It's I have many jobs. It's wider below the equator than above the equator. Man, this is A little chubbier. Me. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby is a good one. It's like pear-shaped. Mm. Let me start it over. So, mm. He said the key component. Uh, oh, so. That was it. Yeah. He said pear-shaped. We all heard him say it. I saw him say it. Keeling, my friend back here who doubts flatter. Did you see that? Yeah. That, it's that's your dude right there. He said yeah, pear-shaped. He said, said pear-shaped. Show me this pear-shaped. Pull up your phone on your Google. And show me this pear-shaped earth, please. I'll I'll wait. <laughs> how about the how about the picture, man? Maybe you could find this, <laughs> Jesus. Maybe it'll work. Uh, the there's video of the eclipse, the shadow going across. They got a picture of they got a video of the Earth, and then they show the. Uh, the eclipse, the shadow the one across. looks just it goes, really fake, right? It goes across. Yeah, it goes across like a shadow, like a black spot. I seen goes, this. I seen this. Man, I, I can't believe they're it's releasing so that fake. Kind of I stuff. Can't, yeah, if right. I was in the Illuminati, I would fire whoever fucking released that shit. Why? Nobody's gonna do I anything. They don't suicide. care anymore. At I this point, suicide. they're just like, look, we're gonna just put this shit out. Get, There's like ten dudes who know about it. Like Eddie Bravo is like one of the ten, and then nobody gives a fuck. So they just put it out. Nobody cares. Okay. What, what, what? Game of what, Thrones. Game of Thrones. What do I search to find this? Uh, yeah, forget it. It doesn't even matter. This well, you is, know what? This is what my friend pulled up on his. Tell me what you think of that. Uh, it looks great. Is it no. shaped like a pear? What that's, is this? That's an egg. Now it looks like an egg. And Keeling, this isn't. This is. This is also actually. Yeah. Hey, can you find um, uh, Don so this Pettit? Like a real one. Destroy technology. Put, say it. Put Don Thanks. Pettit. Destroy technology. Let's see if that pops up. That's that's a great video. I mean, there where he says we we destroyed the telemetry data. No, he just says we destroyed. He just said just that's it right there. Just play any of those. See if it works. Do you have internet that actually? I can works? go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology, and it's a painful process to build it back again. I mean, that doesn't mean anything to you, TJ. Uh, they I don't, destroyed. Why, why would we have destroyed the technology? <laughs> exactly. I don't understand that. There was millions of dollars. Yeah. Put in it. I would go sense. back to the moon in a nanosecond, is what he said. Except uh, we destroyed the technology. You heard he, it. You heard it. He looked medicated. That's all I want to <laughs> say. He didn't look well. Dude, the Illuminati should suicide that guy. <laughs> suicide him. <laughs> He's fucking them up. Anyways, um. Were you, did you guys uh, hear any of that? No, I uh, couldn't uh, hear anything. Oh, else. oh, sorry, sorry. So we were, so they're not able to hear. They didn't hear any of that. They should have. That's weird. I've seen it. I've seen it before. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I got, I got one, one real conspiracy theory for okay. you. Okay. Okay. What? Pro wrestling. I heard it's fake. 
pro wrestling is they're taking the model from our government. It's basically the same thing. Well, I, th I think that mixed martial arts has actually taken the model of pro wrestling to run itself. There's no difference between the UFC and the WWE. There's a lot of similarities, a ton of them. There's major differences, TJ. You're losing me. Really? Yeah. Um, There's like pro one, wrestling is 100 percent fake. No, no, no. no MMA no, yeah, yeah. is. Uh, but the business probably 99 percent real. The business model. Well, I'm curious to hear about your one percent at some point. But the business model, like there's Takata one, Coleman. There's one dominant. Uh, there's one dominant league. Um, you look at the similarities. What the WWE purchased and bought out all of their competition. The UFC largely did that. Okay, we're gonna get back to flat Earth though. That's not surprising. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, oh, man, what about assassinations? What about like CIA assassinations? That happens all the time. That's so, nothing new. Well, that's nothing new. That's that's low level conspiracy theory. I'm just curious about like. So, okay, so let me just ask you this: What do you think about Donald Trump? Is he is he part of the conspiracy, or is he uh, the maverick that some people want you to believe that he's not in on the bit and he's 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 fucking I everything they, up? I want to hear what they say about. He's that. probably he's probably it's hard to tell. It it could be a whole show. I mean, it appears that he it appears that he's the establishment is going after him. The media is clearly going after him. They they're balls out just going after trying to start you can race find wars. videos of him saying he's down with flat earth really yes trump i've seen these before, no before way. i even got into flat earth there was videos of him saying like i don't think the earth is round they're lying to us about that no they lie way. about everything dude no i'm telling way. you I have you guys like, heard this the trump is a, said something about that he thought the earth was flat have you heard about this you have yeah. bell Damn, it's true. No, I haven't had that. No, dude, you need to look that up. See if oh, you can yeah. find Trump. Trump right. believes flat Earth. Yeah. Trump flat Earth. Come on. I do know the people think he is a part of conspiracy theories. Which yeah, well, one's not? Yeah, I got it. Over here. Okay. Curious what foreigners think. Trump flat Earth. Let's see if we got that. Or just conspiracy theorists. Hey, I'm curious how Trump is uh, portrayed in the media for you guys, Gavin Dell. Like, what, what, how much do you hear about Trump and his politics uh, where you guys aren't? Uh, too much, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> well, I assume they go after yeah, the we... same way there. Way there. Um, no, I don't think so. I think he tends to be probably handled more with kid gloves over here in European TV. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I've got no real opinion of him. I don't think he's any better or worse than any of the other ones. So. Yeah. All right, hey, uh, I got this. Check this out. Uh, if you choose a side, if you like him or you don't like him, they got you. They tricked you. Oh, it's all words? Dang. Never mind, it's all words. Don't worry about you that. guys, Gavin, what do you, um, before we wrap this up, what are, uh, what do you have to say to people that um, are on the fence about the whole flat earth thing? They're really not convinced. They're like TJ. Any final thoughts um, you want to let out? Well, I think uh, people should just, again, I'll, I'll repeat it, go back to trusting their senses, um, thinking about common sense. Um, using natural science to prove um, what's measurable, testable, repeatable, uh, learning to see through the sophistry. So learn how language works, logic, rhetoric, grammar. Make sure that you have the right tools to see through bullshit um, and only rely on things that you can prove for yourself. Huh? Be very wary of sub-party testimony um, and certainly don't look at any imagery as if it's proof of anything. Beautiful. Yeah. Del? Well said. Yeah, I would just concur exactly what Gav said. Uh, apparently, there is no video of Donald Trump saying that the earth is flat. Plaster just found. Uh... Come on, Jeff. That would have been huge. That would have been in every mixtape, flat earth mixtape. Didn't he go on Alex Jones, too? Mm -hmm. He yeah. did go on Alex Jones mm -hmm. way back in the day, though. He won't do that now. But... No, I've seen him talking about it. What do you guys think of Alex Jones? It's has he still got a reality show? His own reality show? No, 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 not Trump. 
No, that's oh. gone. That's gone. You guys ever listen to Alex Jones? No. Never. I used to listen to him when, you know, say 15 years ago. Yeah. I used to think a lot of the things he said were true. And like most of these people, there's half truths and truths and a half that hide the real truth. So um, some of the stuff he said I, I thought was correct at the time. Looking yeah. back now, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. Really? Like what um, uh, What stuff What stuff was he saying that... Uh, that turned you off? Oh, I can't remember anymore. I think he's fear mongering his, um, you know, there's always a lot of that involved in ma making people scared and, you know, a lot of unverifiable stories. Again, hearsay things that you can't, um, you can't prove for yourself. So that switched me off at some point. I guess I just I matured out of it. Um, I see where you're coming from. I think there's, when it comes to Alex Jones, he's a friend of mine. I've been on his show a couple of times and uh, there's people that uh, think he's a shill and he's working for the Israel. Uh, he's protecting the Jews and all that stuff. And, and um, who knows what's true? I don't know him that well. I'm not, uh, I don't know everything about him, but uh, one thing I do know for sure is when I hang out with him, when we like hang out, we've been to Vegas together, hanging out. He is, the exact same way he is on on his uh, pot or his show uh, conspiracy theories a hundred percent of the time he's talking about he never gets tired when he's the exact same person all the way through the whole weekend and i'm just eating it up i just want to hear about um you know different conspiracy theories and he's on a I, I, I he stays away from ufos and he stays away from um uh flat earth and he stays away from uh, like the Holocaust and all that. And I, I think he's, I think uh, if he's not a shill, I don't think he is. I really don't. I just think that everybody is an expert, like all these conspiracy theories. They spend all this time on certain conspiracy theories and that's their baby. And they don't really want to talk about any other conspiracy because uh, it might discredit their, what they put their life into. Like if someone's really into JFK and he's, he knows everything about JFK, um, he might not really, he's not going to get into uh, st uh, other conspiracy theories that he's not well versed in because it could discredit what he's trying to, the point he's trying to get across. You know what I mean? So yeah, I can understand that. You know yeah. what I mean? Cause, cause just, I've never met the man. So you, you've got a better uh, yeah. take on that. That's One cool. thing for sure, for sure is he is, he is, he, is uh, on the. I found the Donald Trump part. If you let want. me see, play Donald Trump. He says, "If is it a video? I fly a lot. If the Earth was round, I would know it." Oh, okay. Then there's I no video. Lot, of, there's no video of a him. lot. No one flies more than me. Listen, I got my own jet. It's the best plane in the world. If it were round, believe me, I would know. The comments came in response to question from AP reporter Charles. Blah blah blah. Regarding I'd have to see video of him talking saying that. And... Anytime. There's written words. Dude, I found all these. Look at this one. I, mean, I need a video. You need a video. No, but I mean, you'll find. I mean, I'm not gonna pull it up and be all loud right now. No, that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah we can find video. Yeah, we yeah, can... you need you need to find the video. You can't. Je can't be Jeff Glover's uh, Donald Trump sort of sounds like Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How are we just? Oh no, about Alex Jones again, real quick. Um, when you find a video, let me know. Um, with Alex Jones, it's like there's there's people out there. They believe, uh, you know, we've been um, raised and conditioned to you can't question the Holocaust and you can't, you know, you'll be anti-Semitic. It's a thought you'll, crime. You, yeah, it's a thought crime. In some countries, you can get thrown in jail. You know how that exists? Like we, We've been brought up with uh, you better not say anything about the Jews or you, we're going to ruin your life, right? You guys aware of that? It worked, right? Gav, it worked, right? You got to be careful about that stuff, right? And it's slavery. Yeah, as far as I know, there's lots of countries where you need to be very careful. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be careful. It could like even in the United States where you, you even in the United States where you can't get thrown in jail. I mean, you're not going to get thrown thrown in jail, but if you make enough noise, they can come after you and ruin your life. Right? You guys aware of that? Aware of that? For sure. They've that they've done it. So if you're really into um, flat Earth, or maybe you're really into JFK and trying to prove that, or 9/11. 
and you're trying to convince someone who's nine in, not into 9-11, you're trying to convince them into 9-11, it wouldn't be a good idea to start getting into your beliefs on the Holocaust right off the top of the bat, right? Because you ain't never going to get to 9-11. They're not going to believe you. Do you understand what I'm saying? As soon as you start talking about um, what happened in the Holocaust and what you believe, then your 9-11 uh, speech ain't going to work. And your JFK speech, your I Iran-Contra speech is not going to work. Your pedophilia uh, sex trafficking ring is not going to work. It, so uh, people criticize is, is Alex. Is your rationale why, why, why Alex uh, Jones doesn't discuss the flat earth? Or? Yes, because if he's trying, he, he's sure. working, he's working. If you're working on a, I know someone personally that's really, really high in a certain uh, conspiracy theory. And he's this guy's, uh, this guy's. Uh, basically, um, man, I, I don't want to give it away, but he's a total flat earther, but he, but he cannot talk about it. And he tells me, please don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. I got to get my message through. He's on a mission. He's got a certain mission. And if he brought up flat earth, it's going to, he's going to lose at this point. Is it Joe at Rogan? This point, uncomfortable to say that? I'm sorry. At this point, um, flat earth, Holocaust stuff. It still will turn people off right away. Right away, you're not going to be able to get your point across, you know. And there's people th that that uh, um, handle their business that way. They won't bring up certain things because it it will uh, discredit them in the other thing that they're trying to push. And I think with with Alex Jones, he, he's trying to he's working on the conspiracy theories on the you know Charlottesville was a false flag, boss, Boston bombing, whatever, um, getting Trump, not, he, he's on a mission to stomp out Hillary, right? He's on a mission, he, 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 he's on a mission to stomp off the Democrats, the liberals, right? So let's just say he didn't believe in, um, he, he thinks, let's say deep down he knows that North Korea is just a distraction and they're not going to launch any missiles and all that, he knows that, but he'll use that because people believe that uh, he's gonna. He has nuclear weapons. He's gonna launch them. So he'll use that to go after the Clintons, because then he'll say the Clintons are the ones that sold them the nuclear weapons. But he knows they probably don't even have nuclear weapons. So he does. He's got certain things that he pushes to get his agenda across. Instead of trying to sit there and spend an hour trying to convince people that North Korea don't even have nuclear bombs and they're just a big distraction. So my point is. Uh, I think when you compare what, what Alex Jones is saying on his show compared to all the mainstream media outlets, there is a lot of bullshit, you know, that nothing's a hundred percent true, but even if he's 50% right on and 50%, he's exaggerating on some shit and he's just fear mongering. It's way more the truth. There's way more truthful stuff in on info wars than there is in any other these mainstream media outlets you understand what i'm saying so well he's like he's like the gatekeeper like if you could believe in alex jones conspiracy theories and 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 hillary and bill clinton and and their shenanigans and their gangsters that's what he's saying i mean alex jones constantly says the clintons are gangsters they're corrupt He's constantly, every day about that. He's going on and on if about... If he goes flat earth, he'll be yeah, out of business. His, exactly. And and if he, at this point, people are really sensitive about flat earth. They get really, really mad. So right now, it's like, why, he's thinking, why would I get into UFOs and the fucking moon landings and all that shit when I'm trying to get the Clintons out of politics? You know what I mean? So maybe he is a show. I'm not saying he isn't. I don't know if he is or isn't. He's cool to me. He's a friend of mine, and I known him, and I partied with him. We went, we went out, we drank, and we had a good time together. <laughs> and he's the exact same guy, same voice. He talks about he can he can go conspiracy theories all night, all <laughs> night without he'll wake up in the morning and call you and then have breakfast and still conspiracy conspiracy theories. So my point is, I think that. Um, every, everybody needs to understand that everyone's got their own little mission. There's a lot of levels. It's not just flat earth. Flat earth is huge and I'm a, I'm all over it. You know me, but I understand that people have other agendas. I understand that. And just because they're not, uh, uh, in line with your agenda doesn't necessarily mean that they're getting paid by Israel and their shills. You know, you understand what I'm saying? That that's how I feel about that. I I I like to let that out. I mean, you know, I could be wrong. Alec Jones might be getting paid by someone to say shit, and I I know he definitely. I don't like it when he when he's going on and on and fear mongering about North Korea because I got my personal beliefs about North Korea. I think that's 
North Korea is just a, a, a complete distraction. They don't have. I don't even know if that Jung Hung Un is even in North Korea. He might be in Switzerland living. It, who knows what those films really are? Have you seen those North Korean films? Yeah. Watch that shit one night. Look into North Korea. Maybe it's, that's Area Fifty One. Maybe that's what they're covering up. Area Fifty One. It's they're, fascinating. They're doing... What scares me? One thing that you hit on, Eddie, that that does scare me is the ability to push agendas uh, on behalf of our government with. CGI and things like that like there's going to be a time maybe it's already now that the government or whomever could make a video and create a super villain and say they're taking over the world and show video clips and we would have no idea if any exactly I mean the Nazis did that the Nazis yeah. they they created a fake um, hysteria there there's a propaganda video they just wanted to get people okay with killing people right yeah. so they what they did is they created uh, this fake um, problem with uh, demented people, like crazy, deranged people from mental institutions that were going out like zombies killing people. And they, were, they would put these newsreels out, and people in Germany were like, oh, shit, there's these crazy people out killing people. Um, so we need to... Uh, we need okay to kill them. So it was okay to kill them. If you if if there's these crazy demented people that escaped mental institutions, it's okay to put them down. So that's what they wanted to get across. It was just a mind fuck. So now they got everybody on board. So now all they got to do, whenever they want to get rid of someone, they just accuse it. They just accuse him of being mentally unstable and he's he's crazy and and we got to kill him. So that's just an example of uh, creating some fake shit like. Um, Exactly what you're saying. There's just an example of just making shit up. And, and people, I mean, look at how people surf the web and like clickbait and things like that. Like people are attracted to unbelievable stories and, and yeah. things that are scary. So yeah. uh, it's not hard for something to be put on the internet that is not at all accurate and become viral and scare the shit out of people. Yeah, that's what's going, it's going on all the time. Like one person died in Charlottesville. One person died. We got people getting killed every day in east la drive-bys every day in chicago they're getting people are getting killed all the time innocent children getting killed all the time what about a million uh civilians getting killed in iraq what about that no one but gives a shit about the, that the charlottesville stuff though is way more one it's, it's bigger it's bigger than just one person dying it was a setup it was a false flag see that i'd love to talk about that yeah. all day long yeah that was i would love i, I would love to hear the it, reasoning it, behind that yeah it's it's pretty it's not that complicated you know they're just trying to they're just trying to start a race war that's what they're trying to do and they and uh who to, like the just, the liberals just, yeah, the liberals I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna have to wrap up and get off here shortly okay uh, let's wrap this up we're done too um any final thoughts any final words you yeah, want to say just just like you were saying in regards to alex jones and people having their own avenues of, of pursuit that's the very same here for us at beyond the imaginary curve we remove any other subject for, for us we focus purely on science and this very question um and if anybody's interested and wants to join the, the common man's pursuit of finding out full dimensions of Earth, then please join us on Beyond the Imaginary Curve. Awesome. And we're there every Saturday, live, and anybody's free to join, whether you believe that it's flat, concave, globe, um, as long as any claims that anybody's making is based on objective truth and it can be proven practically, then we don't have any issues. So it's, it's been a pleasure, Eddie. I can always thank you for, for giving us a, you. A, a place to voice um, and hopefully bring more people's attention to this question. Thank you very much. Gav? Yeah, yeah, I'd just like to yeah, say thanks as well, Eddie, for having us on and letting us air our message or what we feel to be the correct avenue. Um, and I wish you best of luck too with your um, friend huh, who you're doing yeah. the donations for. I hope Thank that you. works out for Thank him. Thank you for that, yeah. And uh, thanks for having us on. Thank you, guys. We'll talk Cheers. soon. Cheers. I'll be Bye. watching you on that imaginary curve. Be on the, I'll be watching. I love that. More interviews. More interviews. More interviews. More of them. I love them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Active, active inquiry and dismantling beliefs. That's the best way forward. Beautiful. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Hey, w one more time for the, the donations for Javi Vasquez. Yep. It is tiny.cc forward slash tap cancer. 
Thank you very much, guys. Jeff Glover, you're the man. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Happy to be here. James Watson, Black and Kill Symphony. We're gonna make a. We're gonna have a reunion tour. Go, James. We're gonna do it. Go, James. <laughs> All right. TJ, thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, I hope you got something out of this. If not, eh, go smoke a joint and relax. Thank you, guys. Good night. Yeah.